As the tryptophan from Thanksgiving turkey wears off, the adrenaline kicks in on Black Friday for a 6A semifinal matchup between the Brophy Broncos and the Red Mountain Mountain Lions. Good evening and welcome folks alongside Chris Andriotis. I am Zach Warhack for this audio broadcast on RMTV and Chris Brophy red hot coming into the playoffs 10 and 2 on the season and six straight games they have closed out in a fashion of victory. This team looks really good offensively but especially defensively coming into the postseason in this game tonight. Two very good football teams well coached a lot of talent on both sides of the ball for both squads. Uh, this is going to be a heck of a game. I can't remember any time where these two teams have squared off and it hasn't been a battle. You see a lot of similarities between the two in winning games in the battle of the trenches. Yeah. The front seven for Red Mountain has been stellar, led by Champ Genix, and a huge week last week for Jamison Wade against Pinnacle. Yeah, three sacks for the young man. Um, really came into his own as a, as a pass rusher last week. I'm sure we'll see more of that tonight as well. It's been three straight wins in this matchup for Red Mountain. They knocked Brophy out of the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. They want the trend to continue tonight. Brophy on the flip side, they want to rewrite history. What do they need to do to take a victory in this matchup tonight? Well, I think, number one, both teams need to take care of the football. You know, these kind of games, the, the, the margin for error is so small. Uh, you really have to protect the football and be real careful with it. Uh, I think if one team can make a special teams play, that could turn the tide as well. So something like, you know, anything in that kind of uh, scenario could, could turn the tables. And I think the quarterback play. Which quarterback is going to outshoot the other one, we'll see tonight. It will be the battle between Simon Lopez and Charlie McGinnis at the quarterback position and Red Mountain set to kick off. Brophy ready to receive. The ball will be kicked from left to right by Kai Evans for Red Mountain in the white jersey, red pants. As for Brophy, all blacked out. Black uniforms with red numbers, black pants, and red helmets. The crowd on both sides of the field packed and all standing on their feet. We expect it to be an electric environment tonight and the winner of tonight's matchup will take on the winner of Saguaro versus Sal Point. Four good teams left in the 6A state championship, and we're gonna get a winner tonight. Kai Evans awaits the whistle from our officials. He gets it, puts the arm up to the sky, and sends it deep. We are underway at Ray Lang Field at Central High School, and the kick taken back out of the end zone, right to left down the center of the field, and a stop just across the 20 yard line. Tackle made by Jacob Redwing. And that trots out the offense for Brophy and the defense for Red Mountain. We talked about the linebacking core in the open here for Red Mountain. It's been trading weeks for these guys. Champ mm -hmm. Jennings two weeks ago with a huge game. Jamison Wade last week. Could you see someone on the line get involved tonight like a Carson Mauter or Seth Barron? I think absolutely you could. You could. Um, I know. Uh that uh, we haven't called Rock Miller's name quite often. And I think he's, he's back in the lineup this week as well. So a lot of, somebody's gonna have to step up in a one-on-one -on -one situation, especially in a pass rush and, and win a matchup. 12, Charlie, Charlie McGinnis set to take the snap. This Brophy offense loves to work out of the pistol and that's how they are set up on first and 10. McGinnis with the gives to Chamber, play action, takes a deep shot early. Ball floating up and batted away by Gamba who's gotten back into the lineup and a nice stop there on first down. And that's where the offense becomes created for Brophy. It all sets up with the run. They work play action on first down and take a shot. Absolutely, and that's that's kind of a tendency breaker for them. Uh, this is a very good offensive line, very well coached, uh, very athletic for their size. So it'll be a tough matchup for this Red Mountain defense tonight. They get back to the line quickly, 11.48. Still remaining in the first quarter, second snap from scrimmage. This time McGinnis does give to Chambers and Jenix in to make his first tackle of the night. And he's only 18 tackles now shy of Parker McClure, the single season record holder with 155 at Red Mountain High School. That's just incredible, that many tackles. That's over 10 tackles a game. You know, you're doing something right if you're getting that many tackles. And Jenix super involved not only in the run stopping game but the passing game as well. Yeah. Third down here, and it's another give. And Chambers finds the outside and has enough for the first down. Goes out of bounds 
at the Red Mountain sideline on the far side of the field, but a flag comes in late where the tackle took place. Couldn't tell if it was a face mask. We await the first call of the night and the officiating crew marches forward. And it looks like you got it right, partner. They scoot it forward out towards the 50 yard line as Brophy pick up their first down of the evening and an electric offense, pretty balanced it has been all season. They've put 392 points on the board. And they're going no huddle, the check with me game, as is all the rage these days in football. McGinnis from the right half ship, shifts Chambers to his left, a quick pass. They look to set up a screen to Dalen Sharper and couldn't connect, so it'll bring up second and 10. That's, that was a, a long way to throw the football. I mean, he threw it more than halfway across the field to get that screen going. A lot of things can happen when the ball's in the air that long, especially going laterally. It almost looked like a little bit of confusion from Sharper as he just let it fly and sail out of bounds at the near sideline where Brophy is standing. So second down and 10 now from the Brophy 48. McGinnis has the keeper and he runs to the right side of the field and has room. McGinnis all the way to the house for 52 yards to open things up in the 6A semifinals. Yeah, that was a, that was a bananas run there. That was awesome. He, uh, you know, like we talked last week about guys having their option assignments. Whoever had the quarterback on that play got caught looking where they weren't supposed to because he ran untouched. Week after week, we see the dual threat quarterback come into fruition, but that time McGinnis housed it from 52 for his 15th rushing touchdown of the season. And Brophy goes out top, 7-0 with 10.44 to go in the first. Yeah, Red Mountain had brought a blitzer off the edge, and he was all about the tailback. And uh, the quarterback did a great job reading it, pulled it, and uh, scampered for a, a game-leading touchdown. So Charlie McGinnis gets the home crowd going with his legs. A 52-yard touchdown run to take the lead 7-0 on the first possession of the game for Brophy. And we'll take a break on RMTV. That rushing touchdown from Charlie McGinnis makes it three straight weeks where he has scored on the ground as we welcome you back on RMTV. 10.44 left in the first, a seven nothing lead for Brophy. On their first possession, they take it to the house and now Red Mountain await the kickoff. Gunner Moore back deep and Brophy set to kick from right to left and the lefty out to set it to fly. Eddie Jetton will get things underway. And I imagine we'll see a heavy dose of Savoy here try to establish a run game and, uh, and kind of set the tone for how this offense is going to go tonight. The run game has been the X factor for Red Mountain throughout this playoff run that they've made, and he is certainly the key proponent of it. Bodie Wagner takes the kickoff and goes from the far side of the field over to the near side, gets across the 25, 
And now both teams get the correct personnel out onto the field. And the first drive of the game for Red Mountain has Simon Lopez out onto the field. And you talk about Zay Savoy. He has had over 100 yards rushing in four straight games now. Yeah, he's been lights out. And we were talking about earlier, a quiet 150 or 160. He just gets eight, nine, ten yards a pop. And at the end of the game, he's, he's rushed for quite a bit of yardage. We spoke with Kyle Enders prior to the game, and he said Savoy came up to him and said, Coach, in my career, if I've gotten 30 carries, I've never lost. We'll see if the dose is feeding him the rock tonight. Lopez does on first down, and Savoy gets swallowed up early. Stop made by Bastian Vandenbosch for tackle number 60 on the season. And this is a very good athletic defensive front for Brophy. Um, a lot of good players with a lot of good genes, and uh, they're very talented, and they move quite a bit. Stunt almost as much as the Red Mountain front does. Yep, that first name we call, Vanden Bosch, familiar. Had a good stint in the NFL, and his son picks up the first tackle of the game for Brophy. Lopez now on second and eight. They reverse it to Wagner, far side of the field. Cuts it up the middle and brought down right around the 30. Yeah, the little end around. We saw some of that last week. Just another way to get Wagner a touch without having to drop back and throw the ball. And Wagner had a statement game last week. He yeah. was the game plan, it felt like, apart from Savoy. Eight receptions, 105 yards, and a touchdown against Pinnacle in that win in overtime for Red Mountain, 27-24. Looks like man coverage here. Third and six. Lopez gets Savoy in motion, fakes and rolls out to his right. Deep shot taken, and it's out of the reach this time of Cannon Skidmore. And that brings the special teams unit out for Red Mountain. I think they had the right, the right play call there. You had man coverage. You know, I don't know if Skidmore on the linebacker is the matchup you want. I think you'd probably want to look at Gunnar Moore down here at the bottom. Although both of these corners are Division I corners, so you know, you're not going to get a lot of space. But I like the idea, just got to connect on it. Yeah, all three levels of this Brophy defense are just extremely talented, and they have a lot of commits on that side of the ball, which we'll get into maybe next possession when they take over, this time a Mauter punt. Spirals and bounces at the Brophy oh 40, boy. received and blown up. A big hit by Red Wing, and he has two special teams tackles on the night, and that one, you could feel it up here in the it, stands. I'm, I don't, I'm not sure, maybe I guess it was the hop of the ball. The returner actually jumped in the air, and Red Wing caught him straight in the chest as he left his feet, and that's not going to end well. All that matters is he hangs on to it, though, true. right? So Brophy start their second drive from the 33 with 9.09 left in the first, and they hold a seven-point lead. They go back to the pistol look on first and 10. Castaneda showing pressure off the near side. He backs off. McGinnis gives this time up the middle. Barron gets his hand in first. Castaneda comes in to clean things up, and it's a gain of one. And something you don't think about, their, their back that's in right now, 34, is I think he's listed at 5'6". Behind this offensive line, you can lose him. So it's really, you have to be gap sound on your defensive front or you, he could squirt through there. You had a 100% shot at that guess right there, partner. Both backs for this team are 5'6", Harrison Chambers and Carlos Estrada. Chambers in right now, but it's a pass on second down. Buggy picks it up at the bottom of the field, just shy of the 40 yard line. Do a little research now and again. Hey, <laughs> look at you hitting the books. <laughs> I didn't have to teach a class today, so <laughs> I had the time. We approach the eight minute mark here and a critical third down on the second defensive possession for Red Mountain, third and four from the 39 of Brophy. McGinnis looks to his right, goes behind him and relays some information to Chambers. Chambers gets the carry, has a hole up the middle and it's gonna be close to a first down. It depends on the spot and it looks like they're giving they're it to him. To, yeah. So the chains move and a nice hard run from that 5'6", 165 frame of Chambers. Yeah, they, they got some pretty good push off the ball there. They're primarily, Brophy's primarily a zone run offense. It's all built off the zone. So everybody's taking their steps and they're in, they're in uh, lockstep, as you say. Much McGinnis easier to pick up stunts that way. Pumps once towards the near side of the field, takes oh. a shot down the near sideline. 
goes off the left hand of Jacob Buggy, couldn't haul it in. Would have been a completion down towards the Red Mountain 25 if he had hauled it in. He put a lot of smoke on that. I think if he had put a little more air under it, he probably would have been able to just run under it, but he put some mustard on that one. Brophy go quick, get back to the line. 7.31 left in the first, second and 10 from their own 44. McGinnis gets the snap and he gives to Chambers who's met by Jamison Wade right up the middle and he picks up a couple. Chambers now looks to check out of the game and it'll be Estrada to check in. And you see Brophy now trying to establish their run game. Like you said, a lot of their stuff, their pass game is built off of off their, uh, their run and run fakes. Third down and seven. It's pass and a screen set up to Estrada and he is met immediately brought down. And a good play that time by the Red Mountain defense collectively to force a fourth down. Always a big sign that you have a well-coached defensive front when your defensive lineman is running down the screen and making the play. And uh, you know he recognized it. This pass rush seems a little too easy. Made a beeline for the sideline and made a great tackle there and forced the punt. You know, oftentimes this season for the Red Mountain defense, it's been the big play that's hurt them. They, they don't get chipped away too much. They mm. usually win those drives where they extend for that period of time. They win one here after just conceding a first down to Brophy and a punt that gets pinned down right around the five yard line as Castaneda let it roll away. And we talked about their, their philosophy change, as you say, uh, where they're playing a lot more man coverage and bringing more pressure and that's gonna put guys on an island and every once in a while you're gonna get beat. You know, and I think that, that's been the, most of the big plays. I haven't seen many big play runs against this, this defense, so that's surprising. Red Mountain set up from their own six for their second drive of the game. The first one resulted in a three and out. Lopez out of the gun. And he gives to Savoy on a little sweep action and Savoy crawls forward for a couple. It seems like Red Mountain is trying to attack them side to side and get out on the edge. Um, they, there must be something they saw in their, in their film breakdown where they feel like they can get the edge on this team, run at their corner, their cover corners. Savoy motions back towards Lopez, and it's a trip set down to Lopez's right. Empty set now, but he brings Savoy in for a little extra protection. Bigler goes in motion to the right. Lopez throws it away from his own end zone, and he had Gunnar Moore in the vicinity. The Brophy fans looking for intentional grounding in the end zone, but Gunnar Moore was in the area of the incomplete pass. He, he was close enough, and he got it out past the line of scrimmage, so I, I you know, Looking at just the quarterback, it looked like he might have been grounding it, but when you see the bigger picture, it was a good call, or non-call, I should say. Jacob Schoenhals checks in now for the Brophy defense as they set up this third down and eight. Lopez, empty set, and he goes with the hard count and gets a big jump that time around all the way into the backfield, Mardell Rowe. And Rowe leads the team in uh, tackles behind the line of scrimmage. I think he had 18 and a half, if, I, if my memory serves. Of course, all my research is great, but I left my notes in the car. It's correct, you're two for two tonight. 18 and a half tackles for loss for Rowe. 11 hurries and six sacks on the quarterback as well. So he is one of those big players for the front four of Brophy. And now a much more manageable third down. Under halfway in the first quarter and Lopez has Savoy to his left. Lopez goes quick to Savoy out of the backfield, cannot connect. And it's another fourth down forced by the Brophy defense and they have been stellar, not only tonight, but on the season. They've only given up 201 points and they continue to battle tonight. Yeah, and that was the right, that was the right throw there. He had Savoy out in the flat. Just, he's just gotta take his time and deliver the ball, don't rush it. You know, he wasn't pressured. You, know, you just gotta step and throw sometimes. Mauder now set to take the snap for the punt from their own end zone, and they had a punt blocked last week against Pinnacle. I 
And this is not how the offense wanted things to start. Mauder gets it away and it's hauled in right around the 45. And Camerata escaping a couple of tackles down the near sideline in great field position to set up the drive for Brophy right around the Red Mountain 30. Made the initial gunner miss with a little tornado spin and uh, made a, picked up an extra 10, 15 yards down the sideline. Camerata, one of those athletic receivers for Brophy, this time getting it done in the return game. And Red Mountain, I think we just had a penalty assessed or at least a sideline warning, what we're hearing over the PA. And there won't be any additional yardage tacked on, so Brophy will start the drive from the Red Mountain 32 with 5.21 to go in the first. And what that means is the side judge running down ran into one of the coaches. They don't like that. Yeah, I mean, it can be dangerous for the officials, yeah. you know? They, they got their focus locked in on the game and they don't want to lose their foot and get knocked over. Swing pass out of the backfield from McGinnis. He went to the far side for Estrada and there was a lot of room to run if he caught that. Yeah, they, they had pressure on and I think Brophy's figured out the, the little quick swings and the screen game getting out before they can get home is gonna to try to neutralize that. It all starts with the offensive line. They've handled pressure well up to this point. And when I spoke with head coach Jason Jewell prior to the game, he said, look, they have a great defense and a good front seven, but we're pretty big and physical with our line and confident in the way they work. They've been holding up so far tonight. Out of the gun, McGinnis gives to Estrada as he surges forward for a few. Yeah, and you see the, the Brophy offensive line getting a great push there. Not the trend you want to see if you're rooting for the Mountain Lions. Third down and five from the Red Mountain 27. McGinnis out of the gun, and Estrada stays in it back. James Krieger in on defense in the secondary, this drive for Red Mountain. McGinnis waiting to take the snap and a timeout taken by Red Mountain, it looks. Yeah, I, we, we've seen Kyle Enders do this just about every week on a critical third or fourth down, calling the timeout, making sure everybody knows what their job is and what the play possibilities are based on that set. And again, the mind games. Now, if you're the OC for Brophy, do you come out in the same formation or do you go with something else? So you're, you're almost forcing them or tricking them into going to their second favorite play in this situation. Or you just run your stuff and not be bothered by it. It's fun to see all the little back and forth from sideline to sideline, right? Mm -hmm. I know the game is played between the hashes, but everything that both coaches have to contribute is shown. And like you said from Enders, he, he waited for that play clock to get down pretty far. Mm -hmm. And it looked like McGinnis was ready to take the snap. And right before he did, that's when Enders came down the sideline and called the timeout. And or they could have saw something, maybe they weren't aligned properly and wanted to make sure they didn't have a blown coverage on that play as well. So, we, you know, we don't know exactly what the motivation was, but we'll see if it pans out for them here. Same personnel on the field for Brophy. Sharper at the bottom of the screen, Estrada. Yeah, they're in a bunch here, a three-man bunch just outside the tackle box. And Camerata completes that and now buggy in motion from left to right. McGinnis gives to Estrada. Estrada bounces it to the outside and goes for more than the first down. Another third down conversion for Brophy and the battle continues to be one up front. Yeah, if this team can establish their run game and get five, six, seven yards a pop, it could be a long night for the Mountain Lions. Killing a lot of clock now too, under 420 in the first as Brophy continue to work and look to extend the lead to two scores. McGinnis sets up in the gun, moves Estrada to his right. McGinnis looks to pass, takes a shot to the end zone, connects! Jacob Buggy in for the touchdown! And that was a tough play there because he, I mean, it was a great catch away from his body. And the uh, the Red Mountain corner, he tried to play the tack, play the body instead of playing the ball. 
and uh, he held on for a great touchdown catch there. Five weeks ago was the last time that Buggy got into the end zone against Mountain Point. This one good for 17 yards and a 13-0 lead pending the extra point. Extra point goes up and through, and it's a two-touchdown lead for Brophy as they lead 14-0 over Red Mountain in this 6A semifinal matchup on RMTV. Great start to the evening if you're a Brophy Bronco fan. They lead Red Mountain 14 0 with 3.58 to go in the first quarter. That time, just a nice pitch and catch between McGinnis and Buggy. Yeah, and again, the run game setting up the play action game. When both things are working, it's very hard to stop. Kickoff goes to Gunner Moore this time as he switches field, and Moore has room and he gets across the 30. A nice return and Red Mountain have been backed up in their own territory, so maybe that field position gives them a little bit of life, but Eddie Jetton, the kicker, gotta give him credit. He's the one that makes the tackle that time on Moore. That's the last thing you wanna feel if you're the kick returner, right? You get stopped by the kicker. Yeah, you're, gonna, you're not gonna live that down. Now, the Mountain Lions have to come out and get something going on offense. You know, I'd, I'd like to see more Savoy carries and just see if, give him two touches, see if he can't get a first down here. Lopez in the gun with Savoy to his left. The give goes to Savoy up the middle and he surges forward out to the 35 after a gain of about three. Savoy has been really that heavy runner for this team, a lot of contact. It's not always the big breakaway play, but he'll get you a three, four every carry. And he is he is quite the physical specimen. He is built for that kind of punishment. Second and seven now, Lopez has to evade the pressure and he cannot. Bastian Vandenbosch picks up sack number six on the season. Yeah, that looked like a, uh, a blown protection there. He was untouched oh, look at the replay here. Eight yard loss back to the well you take a peek at that it's just been negative play after negative play for red mountain early they've gotten back to the line of scrimmage a couple times but now in a third and 15 situation it presents a challenge yeah they were trying to run a, a bootleg and he came untouched right through the a gap three wide receivers down. set now to lopez's right Lopez steps up in the pocket, checks to Savoy on the near side of the field, can't connect, and it's another three and out for Red Mountain. Yeah, he's missed, he's missed on a couple of those. I mean, I hate to call anything routine, but you know, hitting the back in the flat is something that these guys do all the time in practice, so. I'm sure he'll have a talk with Coach McDaniel on the sideline, see if they can get squared away and get straightened out. And Got to get something going here. The defense is going to have to come up and make a stop here. Yes, and you wonder about what kind of energy they'll have if the night proceeds this way, having to be on the field so frequently, three and out after three and out. Fair catch signaled for this time on the punt by Mauder. And 224 left in the first for Brophy to work with. And the Red Mountain offense just been stymied by the Brophy defense and you mentioned, you know, those kind of easy connections out of the backfield. There have been a couple looking to Savoy. Not like on that previous one, he would have picked up a first. The DBs were there ready to make the tackle, yeah. but just something to get the confidence going for Lopez in the passing game. Yeah, and, and we've seen in weeks past where he'll just line up and they'll give him a little quick speed out or a, what they call a now screen where he just steps off the line and he throws it to him. Just something to get into rhythm. 
McGinnis with the give and swallowed up immediately. Mauder with the stop that time on Chambers. As Mauder has become more and more involved in this defense as the year progressed. We know he had to play running back for a couple of weeks for this team. Him and George Perkins kind of split time as well as Talon Lamb running back by committee. But once Savoy was eligible to come in for that Highland game, Mauder has been able to focus on defense. McGinnis looks to take a deep shot down the far sideline here, and it's caught, hauled in, and a tackle broken. Nathan Benzi all the way to the house, 57 yards. And there was some jostling there back and forth. You know, obviously the, the officials are going to let him play tonight, and they're not going to be ticky-tack. And the uh, kid made a great catch and uh, ran it in. This is, uh, oh, is it coming back? I think there's a flag on the play. It looks like everyone is marching in the opposite direction. And that's a big break for Red Mountain. After giving that one up, you get a second chance, right? Did we? It's a 15 yard penalty, it looks like. And the ball now is backed all the way up to the 25 of Brophy, where the original line of scrimmage was right around the, you know, 43. I did not see the signal and as to who it was or what the penalty was. It wouldn't be pass interference, offensive pass interference. It may, maybe a, a, a late hit, perhaps? It makes it second and 27. McGinnis throws it over the middle and can't connect with Dalen Sharper. And now this is a stop where if you're Red Mountain, you have to get off the field, right? It's third oh, yes. and 27. Yeah. It, it would be a backbreaker if you gave one up here for a first down. And with, and with these little scat backs that are they're very fast, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a draw here, just something to try to take them off, catch them off guard, you know, get him, get him moving downhill with speed. We already saw a third down pickup for Brophy off of a little running back screen to Chambers. And as you talk about, partner, the yards after catch have been very good out of the backfield for this team. McGinnis motions Chambers to his right, sweeps it out to him as the pitch goes to the far side, and Chambers runs out of bounds at the Red Mountain sideline just across the 30. And they get lucky with the penalty, and they get off the field. And now, you know, the offense should get the ball around midfield. They're going to have to uh, find something to, that works, or this could be a long night. Castaneda will stand right around the 38 in Red Mountain territory to receive this punt. And I'd really like to see him feel, you know, field this punt. You know, the last one kind of went over his head a little bit, so I think he needs to. Well, it's a line driver. Castaneda takes it on one hop and runs to the left. Castaneda, room to work with on the return, out across the 50, down to the 40 before he faces first contact. And Red Mountain, for the first time tonight, will have the ball in Brophy territory thanks to the special teams unit and the return by Castaneda. And what a difference he made. He fielded it on a, you know, like a shortstop taking a, a grounder and picked it up and scampered for about 20 yards. You know, you've mentioned it in broadcast earlier on the season, but he is a pretty good ball player. He is. I think he's an outfielder by uh, by by trade, but he one hopped it, got his body in front of it, and now with a minute and 17 left in the first quarter, Red Mountain trailing 14 nothing. With this field position, it feels like you have to get points on the board and probably a touchdown here. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see a shot up top, right off the bat. Skidmore in motion from right to left. Lopez under center and he fakes to Savoy. Lopez tries to escape the blitz, but again, it's another sack by Bastian Vandenbosch. They're having trouble picking him up. He's just a sophomore now, and he's making an impact on this game thus far. This Brophy defense had 40 sacks on the season coming into tonight, already two from Vandenbosch, and that backs things up for Red Mountain, second and 16 upcoming. You know, trying to go play action, and he was not fooled at all. Lopez goes with the hard count, and it works for the second time tonight. We saw the same thing against Pinnacle. They got mm -hmm. them to jump twice as well last week. When you have teams that are, that are good pass rushers and they try to time up blitzes and stunts, you have to use your cadence. 
to keep them honest. Otherwise, it'll be a really long night. So back to second and 11, so it's manageable. Ball on the left hash for Lopez. He's out of the gun with Savoy to his left. Wagner and Moore to the right. Lopez pitches left to Savoy. Savoy gets the sideline up for a nice gain. It'll make it third and short. I like the uh, I like the little speed option there. Just two steps and pitched it. Again, just another creative way to get Savoy the ball on the edge. And I think we're certainly in two down territory at this point. Although the time's going to run out here. I don't know if we're going to get this playoff before just the quarter. Just five seconds left to tick. We'll see if Lopez tries to hard count again or if he just lets it run. And it strikes triple zeros. So after the first quarter, a 14-0 lead for Brophy in this 6A semifinal matchup. We'll be back for second quarter action on RMTV. The second quarter ready to get underway here on RMTV. A 14-0 lead for Brophy. And a critical third down upcoming for Red Mountain. Third and four from the Brophy 32. What do you anticipate seeing here, partner? I would imagine you're going to see a moving pocket. I think they're going to go some sort of sprint out. Um, maybe that sprint draw they're famous for with the, uh, the wraparound uh, handoff. From the left hash, Lopez resets the formation. Has Savoy to his right out of the gun, trips to the right, and a deep receiver all the way to the right in Wagner. Motion early on the line, and a flag flies, and it looks like a false start against Red Mountain. That was funky. They, they shifted to an X over with a, with a bunch formation with the receiver split out on the same side, and it looked like they had a quarterback buck sweep dialed up. Now they're at third and 10, third and nine. Gonna have to come up with something more traditional here as far as throwing the ball. Just makes things difficult. This Brophy secondary has been stellar on the season. 14 interceptions and they have some ball hawks out there. Check with me game here for Red Mountain. Lopez takes it from the gun, pressure coming, and he goes down again. This time all the way in the backfield, it's Alex Salome. And that, that blitz was like a tsunami of bodies coming at Lopez. All, all he could do, I mean, he had a, maybe a brief second where he could have got rid of it, but I don't even think he had anybody open downfield yet. That was quite a stunt there by the uh, Broncos. Lopez has already been sacked three times in basically the first quarter. That there, just the first play of the second quarter. And the protection has been tough tonight for Red Mountain as Brophy are getting home. One thing I've noticed, I've seen more shifts from the uh, Mountain Lions tonight than have in any of their games thus far. 
That's not a good one. Tough punt from Mauder, kind of end over end, and it rolls out of bounds near the 20 on the far side of the field. But right now, the way the Brophy offense has been working, it's almost like any field position is good field position. Yeah. Yeah, the way they're running the football, um, they can pretty much do whatever they want at this point. It's going to take some sort of uh, some sort of turnover or big play from the uh, Red Mountain defense to get to turn the tide here. The offense for Brophy will set up at the left hash. As we get things underway for another drive, close to the 11-minute mark in the second quarter. As McGinnis comes out of the gun. Jet sweep, and that one sniffed right away by Mauder. And he's been all over the place in the run game so far tonight. He has. He's been doing a heck of a job. I, and they're, they're basically using him like a rush end, but he's lining up in space. And uh, he's made some, some good plays in the backfield already tonight. Always good when you're at second and 15 for a defense. Seriously, loss of five that time around from Estrada, and he stays on the field in the backfield with McGinnis. In motion now from right to left is Camerata. McGinnis sends Estrada out of the backfield, goes empty, pumps a screen back to Sharper and then delivers to him. He's caught by Castaneda. Those those tunnel screens are feast or famine. If you uh, if you hit it and it times up right, it's a touchdown. If he had he had one tackle, tackler to beat, and if he had beaten that tackle, he would have scored. Uh, luckily, uh, the Mountain Lions made the tackle there. It's third and long. Third and 13, under 10 minutes now in the second quarter, and a flag goes early and whistles halt play. Dead ball. And it's a false start against Brophy, so that backs him up even further on this third down attempt. Yeah, that's tough. Receiver was just a little too excited to get going there. So after giving up a couple of touchdowns, the Red Mountain defense have sort of held their ground and they've kind of made adjustments. Personnel has been back and forth. You get Rock Miller back out onto the field, like you mentioned. You know, he's been a little bit banged up, and Lucas Wilson has really had a great second half of the season for yeah, Red Mountain. He has. And it just adds some depth to that defensive front, which was super thin at some points in the season. McGinnis looks back over to the sideline to his right to get the final call. It's been Estrada as the back this entire drive. He stays in there now on third and long. Play action. McGinnis has time, takes a shot over the middle. Castaneda tries to bat it away, but Sharper hauls it in. Far side of the field, Sharper has enough for the first down and is brought down right around the 36. So a huge conversion from Brophy there. I, we've, we've said this before on the broadcast. I don't think anybody can cover for eight seconds. And he was able to buy time. A couple of the, the rushers fell into each other and knocked each other over. Up tempo now for McGinnis as he keeps it, and he's enough to go, and he gets brought down after a gain of nine. Oh, they're left lane pedal down right now. They are, they are smelling the blood in the water. Red Mountain looks a little discombobulated here. They're not set up. They're waiting for the call. Fast again, and McGinnis with another keeper. Rock Miller in the backfield, brings him down. It was high, but Miller got the arm across the chest neck yeah. area of McGinnis, didn't get the face mask, so the officials leave the flag in the pocket. I mean, I, I think anytime you see a defender get yanked down like that, or an, off sorry, an offensive player get yanked down like that, you, you think it must be something like a horse collar, but in that case, it wasn't. Yeah, it's, it's a really close call and, and judgment to make on the field. As Rock Miller gets the hit up high that time around, and Brophy now go from up-tempo to settling things down as McGinnis checks back in for the play. They've been running this drive behind Carlos Sandez. And another challenge, I don't think there's a play clock that's visible that we can, at least not that we can see. Wade misses a tackle and it's a conversion for first down. Camerata with another reception. Yeah, they, are moving, they are moving the football. McGinnis has not really been pressured thus far tonight. 
Out of the pistol this time, McGinnis play action. Pressure from the backside, takes a hit as he throws it. And it's yep. incomplete in the vicinity of Nathan Benzi. It was Jamison Wade, and I was just gonna say, I think you're much more chance of success rushing him instead of playing him in coverage. So they brought him that time and he got home and forced him to uh, throw it earlier than he wanted it to. That's really the first time McGinnis has been pressured tonight. He's looked really poised in the pocket and he has all season long thrown over 2,500 yards and the aerial attack has been volatile tonight as well. Flag flies on the near sideline and it's encroachment this time against Red Mountain and that moves things forward for five as Brophy continue to work on this drive with 723 left in the first half. Yeah, you can't get caught up in the moment. You have to look at the football. It's one of the, the basic fundamentals of defensive line play is look at the football. You don't have a snap count. The defense for Red Mountain has been on the field a long time tonight. Quick pass from McGinnis over to Camerata, far side of the field. Camerata, after the catch, breaks a tackle and gets down right around the 30. And I think that's that's the idea that Red Mountain had in the first couple of those drives. Just hit the back on a swing and let him get, uh, get a full head of steam and get downhill. And it worked like a charm there. The passing game has been efficient all season long for Brophy. As I just mentioned, they've gone over 2,500 yards, but there's really four receivers that this team relies on, and it gets spread pretty evenly throughout the group. McGinnis rolls out to his right, looks up field, and oh, a chance for Jamison Wade to make an interception that time in and out of the hands. Devin Fitzgerald, the intended target. And again, he had all kinds of time there. Um, I think he just misfired on that, on that throw. Fitzgerald stays on the field, four wide for Brophy. They have three to the right of the formation, one to the left, but it's a handoff this time to Estrada. Estrada gets forward up the middle. Estrada breaks tackles into the end zone. Touchdown Brophy, 33 yards for Carlos Estrada. That was a heck of a run there. And I, I've noticed in, in those uh, inside runs, there is a definite, uh, Inclination, they have made sure that they are blocking Champ Genix on every play, and they got him there. And uh, Estrada's able to scamper in for the score. He's been silenced tonight, just one tackle this evening for Genix. And the third scoring play of the night for Brophy. The extra point goes up and in, and 21 to nothing with 6.38 left in the second quarter. The offense has been great, but the defense for Brophy has been even better tonight. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, this this is a pivotal a pivotal moment here, I think, in this football game. If uh, if Red Mountain is not able to mount a scoring drive here, it could it could get out of control pretty quick. The adjustments are very crucial at this stage in game, right? You know, you're watching plays and series and drives on the sideline, trying to identify what you can do to get an edge. And right now, Brophy is at all the answers. Yes, thus far, and, and McGinnis has been lights out thus far. And uh, Red Mountain's gonna need to get uh, Simon Lopez going if they're to have any chance to be in this football game for four quarters. And it's a great bounce back game for Charlie McGinnis says, last week against Castile, they got the win, but three interceptions in the red zone. He was able to do it on the ground with his legs, had two rushing touchdowns, but that got them to this point and a score update in the saguaro Sal Point game, 21 to 10, Saguaro leads that one. So a good first half for Saguaro and it's kind of the same for Brophy here as they have Red Mountain shut out and both teams on the sideline before the ensuing kickoff. It's really just a situation where you kind of have to find balance, right? You have a sense of urgency if you're the offense of Red Mountain, but it's not something where you can just huck it 20, 30 yards and try and test the secondary every play. 
the run game has been the identity of this team, and down 21 nothing, it's hard to stick to it. Well, it, it's you have to be realistic. There's no 21-point plays that you have. I think what you need to do is just put a drive together, if for no other reason, to give your defense a rest. Put a drive together, go down and score, do what you do, find something that's working. Yeah, you're not going to drop back. You're not going to win the game dropping back 40 or 50 times. No way. You have to stay uh, consistent and, and balanced. Connor Fury gets ready to set this kick away and give another chance to the Red Mountain offense. Gunnar Moore and Bodie Wagner back to receive, and this one goes out all the way to the right short, and Castaneda has it, pitches it back to Wagner, and Wagner gets up field. A flag goes down around the 20, and that's right in the area of probably an illegal block. Yeah, you would think. A lot of a lot of bodies there. Usually you hit somebody you know from the back or hand isn't in the chest, it's on the side. Those those kind of things usually get called in those scenarios. So yeah. they try a little bit of trickery with the pitch back from Castaneda on the return. And well they get out to a decent area, but the holding call brings Red Mountain all the way down around the ten to start this drive. And that's not where you want to be. Six and a half minutes left in the first half. Red Mountain will need to go 90 if they want to punch it in for a touchdown. Packed house here tonight. We're up in the Brophy crowd and the bleachers are full on both sides. There and the away section. Fans lining the fences as well. So a good turnout tonight. Not the, not the largest venue we've, we've been at. Especially for a semifinal game, it's surprising. A lot more intimate, right? Uh, yeah. And things have been feeling intimate night tonight for Zay Savoy as he gets brought back down again right around the line of scrimmage. Alex Salome in first on the tackle. Yeah, they've, they've tried the, the stretch game. They've tried uh, to run power here. Um, they're going to have to go to a different wrinkle, I think, if they're going to run the football. Ruffy has not been fooled thus far. Lopez looks across the board, has Savoy to his left out of the gun. Lopez tries to pass, double clutches, and gets hammered as he throws. And Brophy continue to get to the passer that time. It's Mardell Rowe with the hurry, and that's his 12th forced hurry of the season. And, and it looked like he just second-guessed himself there. He was about to let it fly and changed his mind mid-throw. That's tough to do. He's lucky the ball didn't come out. You know, it's one against a defense like Brophy, you can't second guess. You yeah. gotta let it go or tuck it. You have to trust your, your reads and trust your receiver's gonna be where they're supposed to be and let it rip. Third and nine for Lopez. He shoves Savoy out of the backfield to the right. Empty set now. Lopez goes quick over the top and he finds Skidmore for a first down. Pardon me, that yeah. time around it looks like it's actually Lopez Paxton Thorstad. Yeah, a little, uh, a little quick seam right over the linebacker there. He's able to plug that. Nice little play. Let's see if they can get him going quick and thinking less and just reacting. Now Red Mountain try and string things together. Three wide receiver set towards the bottom of the field. Lopez keeps it on the draw, and he is brought down that time by Mardell Rowe. Quarterback Simon Lopez with the keeper tackle by number 92, Mardell Rowe. Yeah, I think up-tempo is a good call here. You know, try to catch Brophy off guard a little bit, see if you can get it, put a couple first downs together. It's fun to see what these guys battle through for playoff football. Rowe has that big club all the way around his hand as Lopez goes with the hard count again and gets Brophy to come across. But Rowe sustained that injury earlier in the year, and I mean, he has that thing casted up, wrapped up for every single game now. And that, let me tell you, that's not uh, a detriment to him. It's probably an, an, a weapon. <laughs> I mean, because you can full on just, you know, slug somebody with it. I mean, he, yeah, looks like a cartoon character. Probably pretty tough to make an interception with that. Thing I would imagine, him. yes. Second and three now, following the encroachment. Lopez faces pressure again, escapes to his right, and runs just short of the stick. So it'll be third and one upcoming after the spot. And it looked like he had a uh, heap down the middle 
Just couldn't, didn't have time to uncork it there. And Preston Heap caught his first touchdown of the season last week against Pinnacle. He was three for 49 in that touchdown. So there's that same personnel look that was on the field for the last third down conversion. Thorstad bottom of the field. Crowd on their feet now for Brophy making noise. Lopez checks back to the sideline from the right hash. Brophy making adjustment defensively as well. Lopez fakes the pitch to Savoy and has enough room up the middle for the first down and more down to the Brophy 45. Yeah, and the, the setup off the option pitch, he gave him the fake, put his foot in the ground, and picked up another 15 yards. That was a great play. And that's really where Lopez has gotten confidence on the season is when he gets his legs going, right? Over 400 yards rushing on the season and double-digit touchdowns on the ground. And that's a second carry for him on this drive, and I think we're going to see a lot more of that. I think that kind of gets him into the flow of the game in a way other than completing passes, just running the ball. First and 10 now from the Brophy 45, so Red Mountain in positive territory. Lopez back to pass, has more time than he usually has, but steps up and gets sacked. Yeah, and I think he was, in that scenario, look like he was feeling the pressure and uh, maybe took off earlier than he had to. Brandon Byrne, the one to get home, and that's eight and a half sacks now for him on the season. It's tough when you have all deep breaking routes. Um, you know, you really have to be able to hold on for two and a half, three seconds, and they just weren't able to do it there. That sack from Byrne pushed him up to number 10 in sacks in 6A. Lopez throws this one, gets it to Moore, and Moore after the catch gets right around the line to gain spot of oh. a yard short. Yeah, they're gonna spot him short. It did look like the knee went down, and that's where the ball was. So third and one upcoming, and we'll see if Red Mountain can convert again to keep the drive alive, but feels like has to be four down territory. And that's a great play call there. They went with some crossers. They call that mesh. You know, against man, you know, your, your defender that's covering you is trailing you. You know, you hit him in stride. It's a great play call there. Lopez up the middle again and escapes into the secondary. Another nice third down run for Lopez, able to convert. And now Red Mountain approaching the two minute mark in the second quarter and looking to put their first points of the night on the board. And a crucial, even more crucial drive here. You know, I talk every week about winning the middle eight. You know, they're gonna, if they can punch it in here, they get the ball to start the second half, it could be a one score game. And I think Brophy wants to talk about it. They take the timeout here with a buck 49 left and we'll step away. A 21 nothing lead for Brophy, but Red Mountain driving, trying to make it a two score game here on RMTV. Twenty-one nothing. The score with a minute forty-nine left in the first half. Red Mountain have the ball first and ten on the Brophy twenty-six. Lopez comes out of the timeout with Savoy to his right. Shotgun formation and Lopez takes the snap, fakes the pitch and throws over the top. Bodie Wagner. Who else? Into the end zone for the touchdown with a minute and forty-three left in the first half. B-Dubs comes up with the big play there. It was a play action off of the, uh, the speed option and uh, great play call. They're, they're on the board finally and they're still hanging around. That was the same exact look that Wagner caught the touchdown 
last week against Pinnacle to get them back into the game when they mounted the comeback. Yeah, same kind of route, just a, a, a seam route down the middle. And if you get the safety to come in and come up and play the run, there's nobody left to cover them there. Kai Evans in for the extra point. Shoves it through and it's a 21 to seven game. Plenty of time left for this Brophy offense to work with as they've been electric tonight. Yeah, the way they've been moving the ball, um, they, this is gonna be a challenge to hold them out here the last minute and 40 seconds. The good news though, this drive started, I believe with 6.03 left on the clock. Red Mountain work it down to 143. So you at least give your defense a little bit of time to rest as they had been on the field for a majority of the first half prior to that drive. And I wouldn't put it past Coach Bard to do a surprise onside here. It seems like the kind of scenario where they might try something like that just to try to really get some momentum going. It presents a scary situation though. If you don't get it, it, it you does. give Brophy the ball right at midfield with a minute 43 left. But you know, they, I think they feel like they've been playing with house money for the last couple of weeks anyway. Yep. So, you know, maybe there is a little riverboat gambler in there. 28 to 10 is the score update in the Saguaro game as they have the lead over Sal Point. And it's a kickoff from Evans back and return. Handled and cut up the middle. And a good special team stop again by Red Wing. That is his third special teams tackle of the night. Yeah, he's been all over, all over the field on those punt kick coverages. 20 yard kickoff return out to the 21, first and 10 Broncos. So Brophy huddle up on the sideline and they look to get going. They're really able to do whatever they want, right? They've had those quick passes to look to. The run game has been efficient and there's still enough time to work the whole playbook. And I think generally you want to come out you want to run, probably a run play on first down, because you don't want to go three out, three passes and three and out and give them the ball back with a minute. So you're going to run the ball in the first play to see how it goes. Both teams have two timeouts left as well. McGinnis throws an out route out of the backfield, finding Chambers, and it's a first down pickup on the first play. Yeah, if you're going to get 15 yards a chunk, then uh, and not have to use a timeout, that'll get you down the field pretty quick as well. The ball now on the left hash of the 35 yard line. McGinnis working this two minute drill from the gun. Chambers stays in the game as the back. He has three wide receivers to his right and one to his left. McGinnis signals, throws a quick pass to Buggy, breaks a tackle and then catches a swarm of Red Mountain players. Castaneda and Mauter as well as Jennings in on the stop. McGinnis's pass complete to number two, Jacob Buggy, tripped up by number six, James Kruger. They keep it, no huddle up tempo. Minute 12 left in the half. McGinnis over the top, takes Sharper for a shot, and he can't hang on. Sharper had it in and out of the hands, and then he needed out of bounds. It looks like he was trying to just bring it into like a, a position to hold it on his side, and. Like you said, just needed out of that. That was, a, that was a touchdown and probably the dagger if he catches it. McGinnis has had the touch on the deep shot tonight and a good throw again there right in the bread basket, but Sharper couldn't haul it in. Third down and seven, a minute and five left. Brophy on their own 38. And Brophy want to talk things over. They still had two timeouts to work with. They take one of them here. And McGinnis has been really impressive tonight, but they've been drawing up some nice plays and it's been a really balanced, efficient attack for them. Yeah, they've, they've run the ball really well with those backs and McGinnis got into the act as well. And then throwing the ball downfield. He's been very accurate tonight and had all kinds of time for the most part. They come out of the timeout quick and get back out onto the field. Red Mountain yet to break theirs on the far sideline. And we'll see what Jason Jewell and company have drawn up here on this third and seven. Brophy has just been really dominant the back half of the season. They finished 10 and two up to this point right now. First in 6A Central and really battle tested at the beginning of the year. They lost their first game to Williamsfield in a one score finish 35-34. Their second loss came 31-13 from Basha 
since then it's been smooth sailing. Six straight wins for Brophy, including the two that they've had thus far in the playoffs. Both teams back out onto the field with 105 to go here in the first half. McGinnis goes with a hard count, and he gets movement, and that's a tough look. Lucas Wilson jumps across the line, and it's just so hard. I know that Brophy are the one who called the timeout to probably draw that up, but you have the entire 30 second to a minute if you're Red Mountain to talk about not jumping, and that's what you do. <laughs> you're, you're within three yards of the football. Just look at the ball. Third and two now. Red Mountain continue to show pressure as Jamison Wade and Champ Genix both look forward. McGinnis backs out and resets. Buggy in motion from right to left. Chambers settles in on the right side of the gun. McGinnis gives to Chambers and in the backfield, swallowed up by Jamison Wade. And it looks like Coach Enders took a timeout here. Immediately. And they're going to get another shot here to get some more points with a minute left. It'll probably be a long field to work with because if Brophy elect to punt, they'll be doing so from their own 41. You probably think you get Red Mountain pinned down right around the 20 or so. I, I would be absolutely shocked if they didn't punt the football here. Um, the way your defense has played thus far, two touchdown lead. Why would you risk giving them the ball inside? You know, the, the, almost the 40 yard line. And it would present a long field to Red Mountain. And after that timeout just taken by Kyle Enders, they're only left with one. So, I mean, you can build those sideline routes, kind of get out of bounds, but also you remember the rule. If you move the chains, the clock stops until you yep. get the ball set back up. Yep. So first downs are everything. First downs and then a quick spike. Could, uh, could effectively move the ball quite a ways, I think. Castaneda sets back to return at his own 32-yard line. And he's all the way to one side, and I wonder if that's something they've noticed that he likes to kick to the right. Fury just gets the punt off. And kicks it left. <laughs> Goes left, gets it away from Castaneda, and it rolls out of bounds in front of the 20. It's a tough setup, though. Even, even if Castaneda was set up dead center, I'm not sure he would have been able to get to that one. It was kind of a line drive. It was a line drive. It kind of rolled out of bounds. Not great field position here. And 10 Mount Lions. No. At their own 21 yard line, 54 seconds remaining. In I think we'll see on the first couple of plays where they can get something going and then try to uh, try to go hurry up and get into maybe at least field goal position. 54 seconds to work with and one timeout for Red Mountain. They trail 21 to 7, and these last 54 seconds will end the first half. Trip set to the left side, and now Bigler motions from left to right and circles back. Lopez fakes it to him on the give, takes a shot over the top. Gunner Moore in the vicinity. He has it by the sideline, but it looks like he was out of bounds before anything was brought in. Yeah, I think he, you know, when you're running those fade routes, it's so important as a receiver to leave some room on the sideline, try to stack up the corner, and then have room to run under it. Because if you're right along the sideline, there's no margin for error. It feels like just a matter of time until they hit Gunnar Moore on one of those deep balls, right? He had a couple where he was overthrown last week. Yeah. That would have been clear-cut touchdowns. He's due, for sure. You know what they say, you're either hot or you're due. Wagner right now hot, Moore due. Screen set up to Savoy out of the backfield, and he's swallowed up and a nice tackle made by Dominic Mitchell. And not a first down, so the clock's gonna continue to run. They're going to try to get something quick here and then save that last time out. Third and three. I don't know if they're going to get it off. Third down and three, and I guess you don't want to kind of give a fourth down and have to punt one away to Brophy. And, you know, if they can make something happen on the return, you'd rather kill it. Lopez fakes the pitch, goes up the middle, and he's brought down by Rowe. And Brophy takes the time out there. So like I was kind of saying, they had one left in the pocket and they take the time out. So they want to see the punt, see if they can get anything going in the return game. 
and this is one of the scenarios here where if you're trying one to run out the clock, you have your punter perhaps run a run to the sideline and just kick it last second and just kick it out of bounds. Like, you know, run out the clock. You do not want to give them another play here at the end of the half. The chances to let something loose down the field. You think Mauder has the uh, Australian football slash rugby punt in him? I mean, he's done a lot of things for this. I mean, he's pass rush. He's played running back. Um, I don't know if he can do the rugby style kick. If it doesn't have to be great, it's just got to go out of bounds. I would imagine he can. He's an athlete, he is an right? Athlete. You, you mentioned he does it all in all facets of the game. I was a little surprised. He had uh, he got a little holiday uh, hairstyle. He has cornrows. He yeah, he got the rose going. Back in punch Whatever it takes, right? Yeah. Mauder, he was set up short and now backs up to normal territory at his own 15 to take the snap. Mauder does run with the rugby-style kick. Good call there. Bounces once and continues to roll, and Red Mountain don't even have to down this yet. Three, two, continues to roll, and the clock hits zero. So just how you called it, the rugby-style punt. He sprints out to the right, rolls it out, and that brings us to halftime. 21-7, to the lead for Brophy, but Red Mountain get the ball to start the second half. What's the, the big takeaway you took away from the first half? Start with the Brophy offense. Brophy offense was able to run the ball, um, and that, that set up the play-action game. They were able to complete passes down the field and take shots. Uh, protection's been fantastic for them. As for Red Mountain, what do they have to set up in the second to get different? I think they have to keep running Lopez to get him involved and then build are. off of that. You know, we saw the play action off the uh, the option, the fake pitch. I think more of those kind of things I and mean, just get him into the flow of the game. And I think that could uh, spell some success going forward. We head into the half 21 to seven, Brophy on top. We'll be back on RMTV after the break.
A 21 to seven lead for Brophy coming out of the half and Red Mountain set to get the ball back to start things off. Welcome back everyone alongside Chris Andriotis. I'm Zach Warhack and really an opportunity to get back in this game for Red Mountain here on this opening drive. Yeah, and I hate to say it's do or die on this drive, but getting it to one score would be a huge momentum swing and really would put the pressure back on the Broncos to have to come out and answer. You know, the offense sort of got going for Red Mountain late in the half. They put together a nice drive that eclipsed just about five minutes. It resulted in a 21-yard touchdown pass to Bodie Wagner, and we kind of looked at that play during the half, and it was almost, as you said and brought up to me, like Lopez could have been sacked on that play. Instead, they got away with one. Yeah, they pulled the guard to sell the run fake, and the linebacker ran right through the vacated gap and uh, lost his footing. And if he had been able to run straight through, he would have sacked him for a loss. Sometimes it's about catching that break because this Brophy defense has been all over Simon Lopez. You have sacks from Salome, Vanden Bosch, as well as Brandon Byrne. And that defense so talented that we've talked about. And it's funny, just the age gaps you have all around this roster for Brophy, right? A lot of seniors on the defensive side of the ball, but Bastian Vanden Bosch, a sophomore, but a really young receiving core for Brophy and what they have to get back. But right now it's going to be that offense for Red Mountain to get back onto the field. And you have some good youth there. Simon Lopez, just a junior. Bodie Wagner, just a junior. So a couple of those key pieces coming back next season. Yeah, and a number of the offensive linemen as well. So, yeah, there's there's uh, the future looks bright for both of these squads. Brophy set to kick things off to start the third quarter. They'll be kicking from right to left. You see that three-man return game for Red Mountain again. It's Wagner, Moore, and Castaneda. Could there be some razzle-dazzle in our future? Maybe a little uh, throwback. Eddie Jetton kicks this one off. It bounces shy of the end zone, and then Gunnar Moore lets it go in for a touchback. And the first look of the second half for the Red Mountain offense. You know how things are as a coach. Halftime adjustments, get the guys settled down back into the game. What do you think Kyle Enders and company discussed as well as Brian McDaniel? Well, I think offensively they say they have to continue to get Lopez involved in the run game and establish Savoy. They've been unable to do that thus far, and that's going to open up everything else in the pass game. Um, defensively, they're just going to have to bring more pressure, and those guys playing man are going to have to hold on until they can get home and sack McGinnis. Lopez under center this time around. He has Skidmore in motion as he moved with Jackson Griffin. Give up the middle to Savoy. He breaks a tackle and gets out across the 25. Looks like he gets spotted right around the 27, so a nice gain there. Yeah, they faked the, the fly sweep there to, to Wagner and they handed it off. So I like how a lot of their things they've, they've run early in the, in the first half are now setting up different plays in second. It's good to see Jackson Griffin get back onto the field for Red Mountain. A couple of weeks ago in the playoff game against Mountain View during warmups, he pulled his back is what Kyle Enders told me and he walked right past me when it happened and just non-contact doing something little and it happened. So good to have him back for Red Mountain. I went wildcat there on second down. Savoy took it to the right side. Not much of a gain, and it brings up third and short. Yeah, and I wonder if we'll see more of that, where it, kind of like what they scored on in overtime last week with just a straight downhill run right now, especially on a third and you know a short three. Lopez comes back into the huddle and looks at the wristband with the play call. And a big play here for both sides of the ball, right? If you're Brophy, you pick up right where you left off and make a third down stop, Red Mountain. You want this drive to continue and cut this game to just one score and a timeout taken by Red Mountain's offense. So under two minutes gone in this third quarter and already a timeout by Red Mountain. Yeah, that's that's one they're gonna wish they could not have to use there. If you're calling a timeout two minutes into the half, they must somebody must have uh, lined up incorrectly or there was some confusion because you really don't want to use those 
this early in the half. It just takes something away, and it's almost like as a broadcaster from the outside looking in, I feel like whenever you see one of those timeouts taken early on in a half, it comes down to the wire, and they need that timeout late in the yeah, game, right? Yep. And it becomes a storyline. So we will see if that unfolds here as Red Mountain will be left with two, and they break out of it for this third down and two from their own 28. Well, now I would say they better get it. They yeah. better convert it. Needs to be a timeout, a timeout well spent. On it. Yeah. I would agree with that one. Lopez right now in under center. Lopez fakes the gift to Savoy, rolls out to his left and keeps it. And Lopez picks up a first down, brought out of bounds right around the 35. And that's just the kind of plays that you need to be running, I think, in the second half where he has a run pass option. He's out on the edge. Brophy had committed, it looked like nine or ten guys to the box on that play. They had a, they had a blitz on and uh, able to get outside of all of that. And it's a one-man round. If he's not open, tuck it and run, and he did that. Red Mountain go back to the Wildcat on first and 10 from the 35. Lopez all the way at the right side of the field. Savoy takes the snap and goes straight up the middle. Savoy into the secondary and a big gain of 13 to pick up a first down. That's the play I was talking about. Just a little uh, quick power play. Get him going downhill right now. When they had a lot of problems with quarterbacks being injured, they relied on Savoy and the Wildcat. It was against Hamilton, and in that game when he ran from the Wildcat, he went for 136 and a touchdown. They stick with it here, this time flip the formation. Lopez all the way to the far sideline. Savoy goes to the left, that time around Vandenbosch just hangs on for dear life as Savoy brings him forward and drags him for a nice pickup on first down, gets about and halfway. Snap, and it looks like it'll be second and six. And I, they're subbing in offensive linemen here, which is odd. You don't usually see that mid-drive. Well, Preston Heap, the tight end, and Gunnar Moore, one of these star-studded receivers, both on the sideline as Lopez gets back under center. Has the eye formation with Skidmore to the right side. Gives to Savoy to the right. Little hesitation run, gets forward, and he's brought down. He goes right into the arms of Brandon Byrne that time to make the stop. And you know what? I like this drive thus far. You are, you are establishing the run. You're getting some confidence for your offensive linemen and for your running game. Um, this is what they needed to do, and it's keeping your defense fresh. So I think, you know, as long as they can continue this and go score, this is a heck of a start to the second half for the Mountain thus far. It also keeps that volatile Brophy offense off the field, mm -hmm. right? Three minutes gone already on this drive. Exactly. Third and three upcoming from the Brophy 45. Lopez from the pistol, a reverse to Wagner. Wagner, far side of the field. He has the sideline. Bodie Wagner upfield and a big gain. Gets down out of bounds right around the 24. <laughs> I am just a surprised every week how fast he is. He hit that full speed, and he outran a number of angles there in the Brophy secondary for a big play there. And again, the run game sets that up. You have to respect the handoff, fake handoff to Savoy, so you can't just wait for him to come around the end around, and it's a great play call there. At this point in the season, there's literally no need to keep anything in the playbook, so Brian McDaniel, offensive coordinator for Red Mountain, pulling out all the stops. A lot of shifting. I like. I think they must have seen something in Brophy where they can get them out of a call if they shift their, their, their look. Lopez with the keeper to the right side and a nice pickup on first down. He gains nine. So that yes, this is this is a fantastic drive thus far, and I think the longer that this goes on, you know, it puts more pressure on the one seed here because they're expected to win and win, you know. Handily, I would imagine, against a team that just got to 500 last week. And now you're getting that Brophy defense tired as well. One of their star tackles, Brandon Byrne, comes off to the sideline for a breather. Yeah. So you might get a matchup in the line from personnel that you like to see. Lopez goes under center right now. And these things pay dividends in the fourth quarter as well. 
Lopez gives to Savoy, left side Savoy shakes back up the middle and has enough for a first down. He gets brought down at the 10. First and goal upcoming with 7.03 left in the third. And it's the, the end around motion from Wagner. That's where the linebacker's eyes, instead of reading their keys, they're looking in the backfield. And that's why they're able to pick up these chunk plays thus far. All it took for Brophy was one play, quick breather, and all the starters back in personnel-wise. Left hash for Red Mountain. A goal line formation here. Lopez fakes to Savoy. He had Heap over the top, tries him now, and throws it away out onto the track. It looked like initially Preston Heap had a step there over the top off the play action, but Lopez didn't pull the trigger. No, he's he's uh, he's definitely you know it's it's hard when you're playing quarterback and you you know I think you can't play to not make mistakes. You just got to let it rip and trust what you're seeing is 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 the right read, and then just go for it. It was a good concept, and he certainly had Heap open. There was a backer that cut the route underneath, but he had a step. Second and goal from the nine. Savoy out of the Wildcat goes up the left side and pulls the pile forward with him. Brought down right between the four and the five. Yeah, they are Number one, Isaiah Savoy with the not able down. to get a first down here, so this is third and goal, correct? Indeed it is, and they've killed six minutes on this drive. Looking to cut the lead to one. One score, that is. They go back to the Wildcat. Lopez all the way to the right sideline. Savoy set to take the snap. Savoy gets it, rushes up the right side, pushes forward, reaches across into the end zone. Zay Savoy touchdowns in back-to-back -back weeks out of the Wildcat. And they're right back in this football game, Zay. One heck of a drive put together on the ground for Red Mountain. You talked about that power game, the rushing game. They bring the Wildcat formation back into this offense, which they've integrated throughout the season, and it's been bread and butter. Bread and butter thus far, and I think they found something, and Brophy's gonna have to go on the drawing board now and see if they can come up with an answer for that. Kai Evans forks the extra point up and through with 547 left in the third quarter, a 21-14 lead for Brophy. They'll get the ball for their first possession of the second half after the break. It's a six minute, 13 second drive for Red Mountain that goes 80 yards and it ends with a Say Safoy touchdown out of the Wildcat. Really got the run game going that time around and now a chance for their defense to make a stand against Brophy. Yeah, they're gonna have to, I, you know, Brophy pretty much had their way for most of the first half. 
So hopefully Kyle Leonard's made some adjustments, is able to uh, you know, figure them out and get them off the field and give their offense a chance to, to equalize this game. Charlie McGinnis absolutely dialed in for Brophy in the first half, had that 52-yard rushing touchdown to start the game. Then he was able to find Jacob Buggy, and then he had a deep shot negated to Benzi. And finally, it was a 33-yard touchdown run for Carlo Estrada. With a kickoff return. So the kickoff comes out across the 25. It's just shy of the 30-yard line. So decent field position here for Brophy to start this drive. They get it spotted back at the 23, so first and 10. And McGinnis sets up in the gun. McGinnis back to the sideline to get the call. And now takes the snap. Fakes the give, rolls out and tosses it short, this time to Buggy on the right side. And he's caught immediately and brought down. Nice tackle made on the far side of the field that time around by Isaac Haney. Yeah, that was a long way to run to get two yards. He ran almost across the whole field. And Isaac Haney, another one of those depth pieces for this Red Mountain defense that showed up in the second half of the season. McGinnis out of the gun. He has Estrada to his left. Looks to pass, far sideline, and it's almost oh. intercepted. Miscommunication on the route, and it was right in the hands of Gamba to have, and he just lost oh it. Goodness. That would have been a huge play if he was able to come down with that. But the Brophy offense look a bit uncomfortable coming out of the half, third down and eight, and a big spot here for Red Mountain defensively. Well, like I was saying, the longer that this goes on and Red Mountain hangs around, the pressure is going to build on this one seed to, to close the game out here and you start pressing. Pressure and momentum are two real things. Absolutely. Right now, Red Mountain have it on their side. McGinnis back against pressure, rolls to his right, throws out across, picks up the first down to Buggy. So composed and poised in the pocket, Charlie McGinnis faced pressure. Able to avoid it and get it to Buggy for the first. That was very impressive to see the little back there come up and block Jennix. And he was able to do it, and he gave him enough time to get the throw off. That was a big play. Up tempo now for Brophy, but they slow down when they get to the line. Four and a half minutes now left in the third quarter. Guinness takes the snap, has pressure again at his ankles, able to avoid it, get out of the pocket, run towards the Red Mountain sideline, and he picks up about four. And it looks like the refs aren't going to call much holding tonight because there was some full-on grappling going on there on the edges. Five yard gain up to the 44. I think Mauder in on another stop, so he's had a good night defensively. Yeah. And with that tackle, it makes it second and five for Brophy. They've really had a balanced attack tonight. The play action has worked, the quarterback runs, and then the intermediate routes have opened things up. McGinnis takes a quick pass near sideline, almost intercepted, but Camerata able to haul it in, and he's just shy of the sticks. Third down and short upcoming. And it looks like a hold, I would imagine. Yeah, it's a hold on the Broncos. So that backs things up for Brophy. A couple of dangerous looking throws on this drive for McGinnis. Oh, they call it a face mask. So that's a, a personal foul variety. And that's even more detrimental there, a 15 yarder. I couldn't tell if it was on the block on the edge or if it was one of the offensive linemen. Either way, it backs things up and makes it second and 20 from Brophy's own 29 yard line. You see another little bit of a personnel change defensively for Red Mountain as Isaac Haney stays on the field. Logan Haney also out there in the safety position. And you have Krieger back there as well, Castaneda looking up, showing pressure, and now backs off. 
And McGinnis back to pass out of the gun. Steps up in the pocket again, and he escapes, breaks a tackle. Jenix forces him out of bounds. And it looks like it makes it third down and 12 after a pickup of eight from McGinnis. And I've been impressed with McGinnis running, running the football uh, thus far tonight. Not something he did a whole lot of. I think he rushed for maybe around 300 yards this year total. Um, but he's letting it loose tonight, and he's been very effective running the football. He's really just an athlete. Division one lacrosse commit. He'll be going to Hofstra to play oh. lacrosse. Great defenseman and midfielder, but really makes his money at the defensive position. That's my sport I played back in high school, so I love watching it. I know his game. Sister Greta McGinnis, a great player as well in the AGLA. And, and Hofstra is, is a very good program for lacrosse. Any, any of those East Coast schools, Oh boy. McGinnis tries to evade pressure, loses the football. He fumbles it, recovered by Brophy. That time he was able well, to escape long enough, but he got snuck up from behind by the Red Mountain pass rush. And the, the Brophy offensive line, they have made a commitment to have someone in Champ Jennings' face every play. And they have made it, you know, you could see even on that last play, the, the, one of the linemen went and got him and tagged him just to let him know that they're, they're going to be there the whole time. I kind of want that to be my game plan if I was a coach going against Champ Jennings as well, right? He's really yeah, a I, difference maker on this team. You really have to, to commit to stopping him and force somebody else to make the play. And thus far, on that drive, they did and uh, couldn't go better for the Mountain Lions thus far. You know, we'll see how they can, if they can come out and put another drive together here. And it could be a tale of two halves. So they force Brophy out. It was a fourth and 13 short punt, too. Went to the near sideline, and Simon Lopez jogs back out onto the field. And now the Red Mountain crowd into it. You can hear them all the way on the far sideline. And if you're listening over there, guys, you got to be quiet when the offense is working. You should go crazy when Brophy's on offense. As the Brophy crowd ramps up here all around us. The drive now stouts from the 37 of Red Mountain. Lopez, play action. They give the reverse to Wagner, able to escape a tackle in the backfield and just run out of the near sideline right around the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and Brophy was ready for that one. I think they may have gone to the well too many times with that play. It's one of those things where it's hard to decipher, you know, when, you, when something worked on the previous drive, can you go back to it? But at this stage in the postseason, only four teams remain. Yeah. There's a reason these teams are here, right? Yeah, Brophy the, make the in-game adjustment defensively. Absolutely, and, and with the, the TVs and everything they have on the sidelines, it's really easy to get guys coached up from series to series. Second and eight, 2-11 in the third. Lopez looks like a jailbroken play that time around, and he tries to throw it. Could be grounding or a fumble. We wait to hear the whistle. I think they blew it dead. That time it almost looked like miscommunication in the backfield. <laughs> it, and it almost looked like Lopez wanted to go with the handoff. And now the officials are connecting. They call an incomplete pass as Lopez threw it. Could have been a fumble. But I think now the discussion is if a receiver was in the area because it looked like the pass kind of went in the lap of Hector Martinez backtracking. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the roster here at Red Mountain, that is a lineman, not yeah. a receiver or running back. Well, the ball hit Gabe Romero, and he looked at it like he was the most confused person in the world. <laughs> he looked at it like, what is this thing? They throw the flag now, so grounding will be called. Yeah, and because the ball has got to get back to the line of scrimmage. And, uh, you know, again, like you said, it looked like a broken play. They may have been trying to set up a screen, and Brophy had sniffed it out. So now, and I believe it's loss of down as well. So now it's third and very long. The Brophy defense responding and answering exactly what the Red Mountain defense did on the previous drive. Now the Red Mountain crowd on the far sideline kind of silenced by Brophy getting into it. Third and 22. Lopez fakes it and takes a deep shot towards Preston Heap down the seam just out of the reach of his arm. And it brings up fourth down. 
Looked like he had a step there and just a little he bit did. out of reach. He did, and the sa there was a safety over the top, and I think that's why uh, Lopez put the ball where he did, see if he could run him under it. And he was just a step behind, couldn't get there. So both defenses standing in strong after Brophy gave up the initial touchdown drive coming out of the half. They make the stop this time around. A minute and 56 left in the third quarter and a 21 to 14 lead for Brophy. They await the punt from Mauder. Good snap, Mauder runs forward, goes end over end. And oh. it's muffed. Oh no. <laughs> it's muffed and picked up eventually in a scary situation that time for Cree Thomas. As he came up to oh, get boy. it end over end, lost it, but got it back. And that right there, you're breathing a sigh of relief if you're the Notre Dame commit, Cree Thomas. Yeah, he, he he was trying to run with it before he secured it, and that almost got disastrous for the Broncos there. Mauder has already forced a fumble on a punt in a big game against Mountain View in the playoffs in round one this season. Yeah. That was the second one of his kicks where it's kind of one of those weird spinners in an end over end fashion that tricks the return man. He put some weird English on it, that's for sure. Handoff this time on first down up the middle to Chambers and he meets the linebacking core of Red Mountain Genix, the first one in on the stop. And Brophy coming out trying to establish the downhill run running a straight dive. McGinnis looks back to the sideline as the wind picks up a little bit here at Central High School. We'll see if that has any effect on the passing game. Another handoff goes to Chambers and Castaneda comes off the edge to make the stop right at the logo. And I think McGinnis was thinking about pulling that one but uh, the outside linebacker stayed home there and forced him to hand it off. Third down and a full two upcoming. No huddle for Brophy. They go hard count, check with me. Ball spotted on the right hash. Just 35 seconds left as McGinnis shifts Chambers to his left. McGinnis with the keeper, cuts it back and has enough for the first down. Jamison Wade with the tackle, but not before McGinnis gets down to the 40. Yeah, those design quarterback runs are really tough to stop because they have an extra blocker. You're normally not committing somebody to defend the quarterback. And when the running back blocks, you have a one-man advantage. He's such a big frame, too. 6'3", 195, not an easy tackle to make for the Red Mountain defense. And that running play will take us to the end of the third quarter. It's shaping up to be a good one. Brophy driving on the 41 of Red Mountain, 21 to 14 the lead as we head into the fourth on RMTV.
two 6A semifinal matchups going on throughout the state of Arizona tonight. Saguaro lead 35 to 10 in that matchup against Sal Point. And here Brophy have a 21 to 14 hold on this game over Red Mountain. And they have the ball first and 10 from the Red Mountain 41. We switch sides, so Brophy now working from left to right. They have the ball on the left hash as McGinnis gets back out onto the field with the usual suspects. He has Chambers to his right as of now. Three wide receiver set down to the right and Jacob Buggy on his own on the left side of the formation. McGinnis takes the snap, takes a deep shot near side of the field. Almost caught one-handed by Dalen Sharper. And he's had some battles deep tonight where he's jousted for possession. Yeah, again, they're, they're allowing the hand fighting and there was some definite shoving from both sides there. And I like just letting them play. You know, the, the, the DB did get his head around and look at the football, so he wasn't face guard or anything like that. And it's almost like where it, if it's not something egregious or someone doesn't fall or really causes a problem, let them go. You know, if someone makes a nice contested catch, great. If it's a breakup, leave it. Now, if only the NFL and college could figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never figure out pass interference. Second and 10, McGinnis rolls right, throws back left as he sets up a screen, a dangerous throw there as Buggy was kind of in a cluster of linemen. McGinnis never found him with it, and it brings up third down and 10, so a really big spot for the Red Mountain defense as Brophy are not quite in field goal range here, so if Red Mountain can pick up you know, a short yardage stop or a sack, that gives them the ball back. I imagine they would probably go for it here unless, they, unless something bad happens on this play, um, but I imagine they were in two down. McGinnis getting all the signals from his near sideline. He sends Chambers to his left. Out of the gun, McGinnis takes it. Deep shot again. This time he's looking for Camerata. Underthrown, no flag. And a breakup that time by Krieger. Krieger with a nice yeah. little strut. Yeah, that was a good play there. I mean, he underthrew it. You know, it hit the defender first. So there's, there's no way. It looks like they're going to punt. Yeah. Wow. A lot of times you see that underthrow as kind of a design deep shot where you look to get a pass uh, interference the, call, or, right? Yeah, the back shoulder, but he but he threw it to the inside. So there was really no way that his guy was going to come down with the ball. I guess they were hoping, like you said, for the P.I. call. So Connor Fury back out to punt for Brophy and Castaneda back to return. Punt dribbling towards the end zone and it goes Ooh. through. So Castaneda let it go and just sneaks away because that was a couple of strides <laughs> from a gunner on Brophy. It looked like by the ball it was James Pike. He was either going to down it at the one or it was going into the end zone. He took that one hop and he was able to go in, but that would have been disastrous for the mountain Lions. So now they have to come out and answer it. You don't know how many more possessions you're going to get in this football game. You really need to come out and put a scoring drive together here at this point. They've already put together an 80-yarder earlier in the game. They have 11.36 to go in the fourth. They trail by just a touchdown. The defense chant starts from the Brophy crowd. Lopez out of the gun. Gives to Savoy who slips forward and he gets brought down by Salome and the pile's still working. But Salome, the first one there, gain a six from Savoy on first down. It's a good start to the drive. Going with their old uh, counter tray play, or gat as they call it, where they pull the guard and tackle. Getting those big bodies moving. Officials stop play. Looks like they were just moving the spot maybe. They had it more to the right side and they put it closer to the middle. Which matters to the play caller because you're always trying to use the, uh, the field and how the team lines up. Ooh. Lopez tried to keep it on second down and he's met immediately. All night long it's been Mardell Rowe in on tackles and he gets another one there. If you have a, you know, a defense that plays the field and not the formation, 
you can do certain things to take advantage of, the, of them being out of position. So knowing where the ball spotted is, is very important to the play caller. They have it in the middle now, big third and four from Red Mountains, 26. They, Lopez goes hard him. count, and for the third time tonight, Brophy jump on it. And you can see the frustration from the Brophy linebackers, like, man, not again. Well, that's even bigger because it's a first down, I right? Know. In, in times past, it's just been to make it a more manageable third down, but this time it gives a fresh set to Red Mountain in the offense. And it's just a discipline thing of you know, being aware and, and knowing what your job is and knowing you can't go until that ball moves. And it's hard. You have to kind of train yourself to not listen to the snap count because they do, because they're trying to time it. And, you know, but at the same time, you have to watch the football. Lopez goes in the pistol this time. They go with a double end around. Gunnar Moore ends up with it. And he gets a gain of about nine there. Wow. So there's what you like to call a little razzle-dazzle. They fake it to Savoy, give it to Wagner, and he flips it back to Moore with the full head of steam. And I would imagine there's probably a pass play off of that too. <laughs> well, they gave him the first. So a gain of 10 for Moore with a good spot off first down, and they move the chains. Ball now at Red Mountains 41 as they approach midfield. Red Mountain continue to drive. Positive yardage, Wagner in motion. He gets the give on the end of round, cuts back up and he gets upended by Gunnar Moore who got taken down on the block as he was battling with Dominic Mitchell. And Mitchell a little bit slow to get up, has a bit of a limp and he'll check out to the sideline. Cole Ruther in for him. Yeah, when you have those collisions there and there's bodies all around, that's when you get those lower lower leg injuries, those lower body injuries. No gain on first down. The clock continues to tick under nine. Brophy lead 21-14. Bigler in motion to the right, then comes back to the left. Lopez looks to pass. He escapes a sack and continues to work away from pressure. Lopez. Over the top, and he has Wagner! Unbelievable. What a magician, Simon Lopez. And Wagner with the, with the presence of mind to stay in bounds and to make sure he got his feet down. What a play. Simon Lopez got away from the best defensive lineman on this Brophy team in Devin Kennedy. An Iowa commit had Lopez in his arms, and he was somehow able to spin out of it, keep his eyes upfield, connect with Wagner for a first down and they're now in territory at the Brophy 32. And this is really when he's at his best. When he's on the move and guys are breaking, you know, contain and, and getting open downfield. I feel like that's when he's the most dangerous. Red Mountain go back to the Wildcat here. Lopez not to be involved on this play all the way on the far side. Savoy straight up the middle. Savoy spins out of a tackle and is brought down by Salome. And the question I think that we're going to get answered is a flag there. Comes in late. Isaiah Savoy, the ball carrier. Let's see what it is. It'd be a pickup of eight if it stands. And it's against Brophy. Personal, Personal foul. foul as well. The there are some unhappy people here in the stand. Very up in arms right now, and that just moves Red Mountain even more as they're closer to the end zone. It looks like the penalty puts the ball at the 12, so they can still get a first down at right around the two or three. Well, what I was going to say is the question we might get answered tonight is, can Savoy throw the ball? because they're gonna to continue to commit I've, more guys to the box to stop the run when he's in the Wildcat. After seeing so many of these games, I've been calling it. You see the Derrick Henry play where he jumps over the line and throws it. A little jump it. pass, yep. You'll see if they bring it out and they have it in the Wildcat book. Right now, Lopez gives to Savoy. Savoy to the right side, cuts back up the middle. Does he have the end zone? No. The spot puts him down at the one. First down and goal on but the one. this drive right now, Red Mountain threatening to tie this up at 21. And two big Brophy penalties. 
kind of paving the way with the jump on third and four, and then that personal foul there. This is going to be a very interesting end here. This Red Mountain team has been battling from behind all year. They go back to the Wildcat. The spot is at the two. Savoy takes it, cuts to the right. Does he have the reach? He, he does. does. Two rushing touchdowns for Zay Savoy in the second half. And pending the extra point, we're tied at 21. And this, uh, now, now you have to start thinking about that pressure aspect for the Broncos. Now they've battled back. They've Well, if they make this kick, they'll have evened it up. And now they're going to have seven and a half minutes to answer. Talk about Zay Savoy. I mean, maybe the biggest transfer in the state of Arizona for this Red Mountain team as a flag flies on the extra point. But he's a kid that transferred from Apache Junction, and he was so dynamic there. 1,865 yards, 24 touchdowns as a junior. His senior campaign, he decides to come to Red Mountain with the transfer rule. He had to sit out until that game that he played against Highland where he got started, and he has been such an integral part of the offense. Two touchdowns last week, two touchdowns tonight. And do we have a carry count for him? How many touches has he gotten thus far? Oh boy. Line drive extra point from Evans, and it's true, but it was dangerous. It wasn't pretty. It was not pretty. You know the rule. If Zay Savoy touches 30 balls on the night, then that team wins. That's what he told Kyle Enders. If I get 30 carries, my team wins. The Red Mountain sideline fired up on the far side of the field now. And with 7.24 left in the fourth quarter, we have a ball game. 21 all, and we'll step away on RMTV. We are shaping up to have a fantastic finish at Central High School. 7.24 left in the fourth quarter and Brophy and Red Mountain are knotted up at 21. The 12 seed in the playoffs, Red Mountain, didn't even have a winning record coming into the postseason. As you've mentioned, just got to 500 with the win over Pinnacle last week. And Brophy, eight and two coming into the postseason. Whoever comes out with a win tonight, It'll be Saguaro, 42-10. They have a stranglehold on that game against South Point. Yeah, that's impressive because South Point is a pretty good football team. And, uh, yeah, they'll be awaiting whoever comes out of this one. I mean, in that open bracket era, Saguaro have really been that team to kind of make some noise from a different division, right? They, they've said that they can play with the big boys. They've gotten there, and now they don't make it to the open bracket this season but it looks like they'll be in the 6A state championship game regardless. Yeah, moving them up to 6A this year was big for the first time. They've usually been in 5A. So they're up with the big boys and apparently they can handle it. They've been hanging on. And this series history between Brophy and Red Mountain just continues to get juicier and juicier. Short kick from Kai Evans this time around. Field getting switched, flag comes in late on the return. But a burst of speed. Kai Evans looking to force out of bounds. Grabs the back, a horse oh, collar tackle. Man. And it's on Ryder Nosh, who's on the return. So I think Kai gonna... Evans had to grab the horse collar for a touchdown saving tackle. But two flags, one around the 20 of Brophy, one around the 20 of Red Mountain. We'll see how the officials sort it out. I think you're going to get a block in the back down on that end. And the horse collar over here. I don't know if those two will cancel each other out. We'll see what the, uh, the head official has to say here. Block in the back. And then the personal foul. And they do. They offset, so that really 
opens things up I mean, that, for this Brophy That offense. was a heck of a return, and usually, as they say, when you see a guy get that wide open running, somebody's holding or doing something they're not supposed to do. Let the boys play football! Are they going to re-kick it? Yeah, we get back and do it again, it looks like. I was waiting to see where the ball was going to end up being spotted. And they go to just re-kick it. So Kyle Ender's talking to his special teams unit right now, trying to avoid whatever disaster just could have been had and with I, that kick return. And I think he probably told Kyle, don't kick it to that guy and try to put it in the end zone so we don't even have to worry about it. Well, it's a factor with that wind picking up. Like mm -hmm. I mentioned, coming out of halftime, Kai Evans, I mean, he didn't get all of it, but still, it kind of hung up there. It's like when I hit my tee shot into the wind on a par three and it just hangs up and then I'm short in the water. This time more of a line drive from Evans and still a chance for a return from Nosh. Coverage much better and for the fourth time tonight, Logan Haney wraps up on the special teams unit. So Brophy's gonna have to go set, uh, ooh, 82. 82 yards to, to punch this in here. Now, in, in, the, in their frame of mind, I'm sure they'd like to put, go on a seven minute, you know, ground and pound drive, punch it in as time expires and walk out of here with a W. We'll see if they can do that. Yeah, things just get more and more interesting between these two. Last season, Red Mountain won this matchup in the playoffs, 45 to 38. And then previously back in 16, 17, they won 34, 33. It almost seems like they're always one score games when these two teams meet in the playoffs, and we have another one on our hands tonight. Yeah, you have two very well-coached, disciplined football teams that you know play complementary football in all aspects of the game. Oh boy. McGinnis throws to the near side of the field, out of the hands of Sharper, and there have been probably three or four dangerous passes that could have been interceptions tonight. And just one bounce is all it takes. They they keep going back to those uh, those quick screens out on the edge. Um, I would imagine they might stop at this point because it's 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 gotten dicier and dicier as we've gone through. Second and ten now for McGinnis. And Ooh. flags fly and blown dead. False start will be the call, and Brophy gets backed up even further. So the pressure of this front seven from Red Mountain causing havoc up front. And Enders had something dialed up there. There was, I saw a guy roll up late and, and blitz. I don't know if they would have picked him up if they had let, let them run the play. Castaneda comes up from the secondary to show a little bit of pressure here. Haney takes his spot as the safety. Estrada is the back, he moves to the left of McGinnis. Estrada gets it and he's met immediately, tries to spin out of the tackle, but brought down and it's gonna be third and forever. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, I, 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 you get the sense that Brophy's puckering a little bit at this point and, you know, maybe starting to feel the moment. Third and 15, quick snap from McGinnis. Throws it to the far side and it gets back close to the original line. But Gamba in on the stop, and the Red Mountain defense fired up. And Yeah, I was going to say, they have to punt here. There's still a lot of time left here. And I don't think the completion went through, so I think they said the pass hit the ground. So it's oh. going to be fourth and 15. Yeah. And Brophy backed up on this punt. And it'll be Connor Fury in his own end zone. If you're Red Mountain, sure, you can dial up pressure, but you can't I take a running into the kicker, right, no. anything like that. You're going to get the ball inside the 50. Don't do anything stupid here. Haney almost hits him, and the punt shanked towards the near sideline, and Red Mountain will get the ball right around the Brophy 35, and they are fired up with 6.26 left in the fourth. They have a chance to go and get this game. Yes, they do, and I, I think we'll see more of what we saw in that previous drive. We're going to see some wildcat. We're going to see some quarterback runs. Um, this is a big series here for both teams. They held tight against Mountain View. They came back against Pinnacle in overtime. Now they trailed 21-7 to to this number one seeded Brophy team, and they have a chance to take the lead. 
Lopez it, under center. It was 21 nothing. It's three unanswered touchdowns at this point. Lopez pitches to Savoy right side. Savoy a couple of moves and gets to the outside. Savoy close to a pickup of 10. He's spotted at nine. He is so fluid when he is running. It, I mean, when you see a gazelle run, and he, he looks so fluid when he's running, like he's not even exerting himself. But man, he gets going with a full head of steam. He is tough to bring down. So they give him eight that time around, and Red Mountain more than happy to huddle up on the short field and let that clock run down. Bottom of the formation, Bodie Wagner all on his own, one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I'm sure they've noticed that as well, I would imagine. They're set up in the eye. Savoy gets it, cuts back up the middle, first down for Zay Savoy, he gets down to the 15. And they are feeling it right now. This, this Red Mountain offensive line has kind of taken control in the second half here. I don't think we talk about them enough, right? No. Josh Lee, Yosinois, Hector Martinez, that left side working very efficiently on the previous play. And they have really bounced back tonight, right? The first couple of drives, negative yardage, sacks given up, the pressure got there, something has clicked and they've stepped up. Martinez goes to the right side on this play. And I'm sure the coach has told them, hey, we're gonna hit you down to your back boys and you're gonna have to bring it on home. Lopez gives to Savoy again. He tries to push forward, battles through contact, and gains about four. And now, I mean, you're seeing, and obviously, well, you can't see it. You're listening to an audio broadcast. But Brophy is committing 10 guys to the box now to stop the run. So the play action game becomes even bigger because it's go you're going to get one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside with no safety help. Red Mountain still able to pick up a first down at the five yard line. It's second and seven right now from the 11. Lopez was looking to go with a hard count and Red Mountain take a timeout. So that's the second one spent from Red Mountain. Brophy still have all three. So that's something big for them because yes. if they do happen to give up points here, they have all three timeouts to work with. The clock down to 424 right now, but plenty to work with for a drive to be put together. Yeah, and again, I don't know. We don't have a play clock here. I didn't see the official counting down. Maybe it was a, uh, they were afraid to get a delay a game. So they called it just to make sure. And that's something that has been a problem in the past for Lopez in this offense. They've given up those delay of games. We've seen them even kind of coming out of timeouts, have a struggle with the play with a penalty or a delay of game. So execution at this point coming out of the timeout. And when the number of shifts and motions they've been using tonight, you have to get lined up quicker because those things take time and you can't snap it uh, if everybody's not set. And as you mentioned frequently, like coming out of the timeout, when do the officials wind it, right? When does that play clock get started from up in the press box? But as you say, we don't have one working on the field tonight. No, they just blew it in now, so they'll have plenty of time. Bodie Wagner, single coverage yeah. again on the left side. Lopez under center, he moves Skidmore from right to left. Lopez fakes the give and keeps it himself to oh. the right. He stutters a little bit right around the 10 and goes down. He picks up two. It looks like he may have turned his ankle a little bit when he planted to make that cut. He seems to be okay and staying in right now. And he gets back. Wagner comes off the field and subs out. So third and six. Now do they play it safe and run the ball here and if they don't get it, kick the field goal to take the lead. You give Kai Evans a chance to get the points. You come away with points here. Or do you go for it here? They go Wildcat. Savoy to the left this time, and he always gets positive yardage oh into goodness. the end zone. Touchdown, Zay Savoy. And Third of the night. When we talked about those runs paying dividends, they are, they are wearing out this Brophy front. And there is a, a hush has fallen over the plan here. They are shot. Five yards, two yards, 11 yards for Zay Savoy. All three of those for touchdowns tonight. And I don't want to say it, but I'm going to say it. He is single-handedly 
taken over this backfield and gotten Red Mountain on top. And they come out, they have four unanswered touchdowns here to close it out. And it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Evans, extra point, stays true on the night, four for four, and he gives a little golf swing after it. 28-21, the lead for Red Mountain. We're gonna keep it right here on RMTV with 3.37 to go. And I know I say Zay Savoy single-handedly takes the team in the run game, right? You gotta give credit to the offensive line. Oh my goodness. But after contact, he has been churning. He was dead to rights at the seven yard line there and he slipped free dropped, into the end zone. Dropped his shoulder, ran through the tackle. Like, I mean, he, he, I mean, we say it every week, he gets better with every carry he gets in the football game. Shoot, give him 40. If the result stands, he's gonna be in Kyle Ender's ear <laughs> and saying, Coach, we don't even need to do film this week. We don't even need a game plan for Saguaro. If you hand me the ball 30 times, we win, okay? The defense is gonna have to make some plays here to close it out. You it's know. going to be a big spot for them. You know, plenty of time for the Brophy offense to mount the scoring drive. Another short one from Evans. It's handled at the six in the same look, switching field. The contain is lost for a moment from Red Mountain on the return and in to save the day that Lighter time is Gregory Goldsby. Man, he is a dangerous returner. I'm, I'm wondering why they continue to kick to him. Shifty. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty special what Cree Thomas is able to do. And I mean, Notre Dame are getting a good one with him. Not only can he do it in special teams, but he has five interceptions on the season. That puts him at fifth in the state of Arizona in picks. This and time it comes down to the Brophy offense. Brophy back to the wall here. Has to regain some of that mojo they had in the first quarter. Does Charlie McGinnis have the magic in him? 3.27 to go, all three timeouts for Brophy and they start from the 25. Chambers is the back, he's on the left side. Pressure drawn up, Jenix forces a quick throw and a one hop skip into the arms of Haney, but Jenix close to getting home. Yeah, he was lucky to get that off. It looked like Jennings had him dead to rights there, and he was able to sidestep him and, and get the throw off. Quick back to the line for Brophy. A little bit of discombobulation from Red Mountain, a pitch to the near sideline, oh, and Chambers Lord. takes a couple hits there. He spun right into uh, Jennings running full speed, who, who laid him low there, and it's third and seven. I mean, what do you think Jennings is getting to top speed right there? Like 12, 15 miles an hour? It looked like a car accident You have right 202 there. pounds coming at you with that force. Chambers gets up just fine. Third down and seven from the 28 for Brophy. Jennings comes up the middle again. They set up a screen. Chambers has it. He's able to escape, and Chambers has room to work with Haney. Gets him out of bounds right at the 50, but a big screen dialed up from Brophy and the crowd back on their feet on the home sideline. And taking advantage of the aggressive uh, blitz. Brophy had a great play dialed up there. Big, big pickup there. Chambers checks out, Estrada in at the back, and Brophy go quick. I mean, we all know that this is going down to the wire with these two teams. Every game between them does. Estrada goes to the left now. Another blitz coming from Jenix. It's picked up, and McGinnis picks up a couple, but a nice stop there on the interior by Junior Nixon. Yeah, he, he gets up looking all disheveled. Half of his shoulder pads are out. That's all 6'1", 275 of Nixon coming down on you. And the clock continues to run here. I guess they're saving their timeouts in case they have to go back onto the defensive side and force a stop. Right now they're in a mojo and the last timeout taken by Red Mountain. So they use their third in this spot, which is big because I, a lot of times there's chaos if Brophy get this down to the red zone. Um, I'm, I'm wondering why they take it at this time. Like you said, I, you, you think they'd wait until it's a crucial third or fourth down and get a second look at it and, and to regroup. They're not gonna have that luxury anymore here going forward. And so I'm sure he's just talking about all the little things you have to talk about in two minute 
situation. I wonder if you want to get some rest and a breath there, right? After a big, like, close to 30-yard yeah. pickup from Chambers, you have the whole defense chasing him, and then they go up-tempo. Mm -hmm. So you may want to get everyone kind of settled in and have a breather. A momentum stop, yeah. See if you can get them settled in. and. Brophy yeah. have it now across midfield at the 48. What do you look for right now in the passing game for Charlie McGinnis? I mean, he's been really good scrambling tonight, and they've had a couple deep shots that have almost connected. Yeah, I mean, he's they, he's been on the money with his throws. They just haven't been able to come down with the ball. Um, I think we'll probably see another one here. I mean, the only one that wasn't really a, a, a one that he could catch was the one he threw uh, short and inside when they're trying to get the P.I. call here, but... That's not a bad strategy either because Andrews is going to continue to bring pressure here. As you can see, everybody's within seven yards of the line of scrimmage. They're in press man, and there's going to be a six or seven man pressure. McGinnis gets the second look from the sideline and goes to the gun. Sprint out to the right. McGinnis looking towards the sideline, and he connects. Pitch and catch. And that time around, he continues to find his targets as it's somebody different for the first time tonight, Ryan DeConing. Yeah, and then getting out of bounds, another big pickup. Um, and, and the sprint out really negates the blitz because you're moving the pocket now and it buys time for your quarterback to find a receiver downfield. Although it worked for a first down pickup, on that play, McGinnis had a shot over the top for a touchdown. Oh, he just missed it on the rollout. Two oh four now to go, first and 10 from the Red Mountain 35. Brophy trail by seven. McGinnis, far sideline, a quick pass, and almost uncovered there. Nathan Benzie stays on his feet and goes out of bounds, and the clock stops. A big sag off on the coverage there on the far side, and that gave the quick pass. Yeah, the, nice general, the general consensus is you roll your coverage to the short side of the field in those situations because you don't think the quarterback's going to throw it across the field. Um, and he did there. Good job diagnosing it by McGinnis there and finding the open guy. Chambers back in at running back for Brophy. They have it now at the 18 in the red zone with a minute 57 left. McGinnis takes a shot at the end zone. Near side, in and out of the hands of Dalen Sharper. He's wanted that shot all oh, night we're long. Have a the late flag hit. comes in late. It looked like uh, Jennix and Red Wing both hit him, and I'm guessing, yep. And, and that's, that's oh. a hard roughing and the pass. We saw Jennix. This happened with him a couple weeks ago, and, and I don't remember which game it was. But you have to be smarter than that in those situations. You've got to pull up when you know he's. I know it's. You get there and you want to just put your your helmet through his chin and knock him out of the game, but. You gotta do it within the confines of the rules. That puts Brophy at the nine. Crowd on their feet on both sidelines. McGinnis looks back to his. You wonder the situation that comes from a touchdown if Brophy go for two I was to just take thinking it. the same thing. Do they go for it and just try to end it? Or do you play, play this into overtime? McGinnis with the give up the middle. Chambers swallowed up Jamison Wade on the first contact, but second effort as Chambers gets forward for positive yardage. And, and the clock is not even an issue at this point. You know, it's second and goal here. You're gonna get three, your three more plays, whatever they are. And uh, obviously they have to score. Field goal is not an option here. The red zone is where Brophy struggled last week early on in the game. That's what coach Jason Jewell told me. They had to be better there. McGinnis. Looks to be better, and it's almost oh, intercepted. What? That was a game ender in the hands of Isaac Haney, and he just loses it. Oh my goodness. It was in his, in his bread basket there. But a great play, and Brophy lives to fight another down here. They got two more plays to score here. That's as free of a look as you have at an oh interception for Isaac I, I think he, he might have actually scored because there was nobody around him and he would have had a full head of steam. Regardless, third and goal from the five. A minute and 13 left and McGinnis gets away with one that time. Out of the gun, McGinnis sprints to his right. 
as time directs traffic back in the end zone, touchdown! It's caught by Devin Fitzgerald. Is Larry in the house? I'm sure he's watching somewhere. And now, is he keeping his offense on the field? It looks like they are, oh no, they're gonna kick. They have the extra point team in, but a turn of events. It goes from the game being iced for Red Mountain with an interception from Haney to a possibility of a tie game pending the extra point. Uh, didn't we just do this last week? We did, deja vu, <laughs> different colored uniforms, different teams, but pretty much the same result. Except we were, it was we Red were Mountain. We were 21-21 going yes. into overtime, and now we're gonna be 28-28. Still a minute and six left on the clock. Yeah, and again, you have no timeouts. I don't know, I don't know what you do there. Do you play for overtime? Do you take some shots down the field? They have all three of theirs. So you can't just run three times and get out. Like, you're gonna have to get a first down to keep Rofi from getting the ball back here. It's, it's this is dangerous. Connor Fury to attempt the extra point. He stays true and we're knotted up at 28. Playoff football doesn't get better than this, right? Oh my gosh. But like I said, this is this is a, a key moment here because if Red Mountain does not get a first down, Brophy's gonna get another possession. They have all three timeouts. Yep. So they can make that stop and end it in regulation if need be. So the question is how aggressive are they gonna be? Are they gonna take shots and see if they can get into field goal range? We go final in Saguaro and Sal Point, 42-24. Saguaro await the result of this one, and I'm sure they're paying close attention. As they're on that long bus ride back from Tucson. Brophy set to kick off left to right, and it's moved forward with a penalty. What was the penalty? I did not see it, but the ball is set up now at the 50, so it must have been at the end of the extra point. I mean, is the what about the possibility of an onside kick here? Right in this territory? Why not? The hands team isn't out there for Red Mountain. If you put it over the second line in the middle, you would have a chance because those returns would have to run 20 yards to come up here. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some sort of pooch. We'll see what Fury has drawn up from the 50. And he sends it deep. Castaneda lets it go over his head and Red Mountain get it from the 20. Big spot here, a minute and six left, all knotted up at 28. Red Mountain essentially need a first down because Brophy have all three timeouts to work with and an opportunity to get the ball back. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be interesting here. This is potentially dangerous. Right, and, and what do Red Mountain try to do? Do they try to chunk and get a field goal? Do they just go to Savoy and try and get the first I, down and I, work to overtime? I, I think you run the ball on the first play. But then again, that means they'll probably pass because I said that last time and they <laughs> threw it. Lopez is in the gun. The design quarterback keeper, Lopez Ooh, escapes boy. and he's popped, but he picks up a gain of three or four. There's the first timeout taken from Brophy, so the clock yep. stops at 59. A good start, though. You pick up four yards, second and a long six, you know. And I think I think that's what they're thinking. I don't think they're going to try to take some shot. Maybe, I mean, maybe one here, and then try to convert the, the third down. This would definitely be a shot down if you were going to take one, or they're just going to run it three times and, and try to get to overtime. Brophy have not won in this matchup since 2014. Guess what? A game that went to overtime. Double overtime at that. Yeah, I, uh, I coached in that game. A 40 to 34 victory for Brophy in that one. And they're trying to get themselves back to the state championship game here for the first time since 2007 when they beat Desert Vista 34 to 21. Well, they made it back in 0-8-2, but they finished it as runner-up. Uh, I believe they lost to Hamilton in that one. Yep. And they beat Hamilton back in 0-5. Both teams come out of the timeout. Both crowds on their feet. 
59 seconds to go, Lopez out of the gun. Lopez pitched to Savoy on the far side. Savoy picks up the first down. Um, and now uh, the clock stops. You know, that, that option pitch. There are things that can go wrong there and you're throwing the ball backwards. And it, it just makes me a little bit nervous. You know, a lot, of, a lot of solid ball handling has to be done there for that to be a success. Lopez rolls to the left this time, throws and just sends it out of bounds in the vicinity of Bodie Wagner. And Lopez took a hit at the end of it from Dominic Mitchell. Now at this point, you know, I don't know. I, I think he probably, and they're bringing in another offensive lineman, so they're going big. They're going heavy. Yeah, Villalobos checks into the game. 38 seconds left. And like you're saying, I'm, try, I'm trying to put myself in your head what you're processing. You're probably thinking run it here and make them spend a timeout. Because yeah. then you can run it again, make them spend another one, and then kick it away. And then they have to get the field without a timeout. Savoy goes out of the Wildcat. Right side, and he's met pretty quickly. He picks up three. And he'll burn the timeout here. And you'll have, you know, if you don't convert, they're going to get another touch if you don't get the first down here. Yeah, indeed. 32 seconds left, and it depends what you can draw up here if you're Red Mountain. I would imagine um, something of the play action or screen variety because you, I'm pretty sure Brophy's going to bring pressure here. Both teams huddled up making those decisions. It is third and six from the 36 of Red Mountain, all tied up at 28 with 32 seconds left. And Brophy still have that one more timeout for after this play. What an eventful second half it has My been. My goodness. And again, the Red Mountain MO, they wait to get punched in the face and then they realize, oh, we're in a football game. But they've answered. Big third down game on the line. Lopez out of the gun. Fakes the pitch to Savoy. Rolls out to his left. Has to escape and he wisely slides down. He's gonna be shy of the line to gain. And that timeout taken by Brophy. And Brophy was not gonna get beat on that play again. They took their two safeties and they ran straight backwards. They were not gonna let anyone behind them on that play. So 24 seconds left on the clock for Brophy to get it back following the Mauter punt, but we have seen the dangerous returns from Cree Thomas. And no more timeouts here. So, again, I would imagine Coach Barge is telling Carson to kick the ball out of bounds. Don't give them a return. It'll be from the left hash at the 37 for Red Mountain. They haven't made it and won a state championship since they went back to back in 2000 and 2001. The storyline in that 2000 season is pretty crazy because they beat Mountain View in the playoffs and they beat Brophy in the playoffs that year. <laughs> Good snap. Mauter runs forward, end over end. They kill as much clock as they can and he gets a good roll out of it down to the 20. Clock goes down to 12 seconds, so what? Maybe two plays for McGinnis and company to get into field goal range? Yeah, I, you know, they've, like I said, I don't think, I don't think Coach Anderson is going to come out and play press man here. I think they're going to see a soft quarters coverage with safety help over the top. So I think, I don't know, maybe you, you can throw a deep 20 yard out and another one, and maybe you have enough time to get your field goal team out there and try to win the thing. Well, it's funny because a couple of kickers have split time for Brophy. Eddie Jetton has been in to kick, kick a couple as well as Connor Fury. I was watching both of them warm up. Jetton was trying from 50, and he was short, and it looks like Brophy may just be taking a knee and content to go to overtime. Indeed, they are. Oh, go, We're shaping up 
for another <laughs> exciting game, partner. Well, should we should we cover the rules again real quick? Yep, go ahead and go over them. Back-to-back -back weeks for overtime for this Red Mountain team. And you have the rules, pal. Each, each team is going to get a possession from the 10-yard line. You have four downs to score. Um, you can kick a field goal at any time if you choose to. Uh, it's, it's beneficial if you win the toss to go on defense first so you know what you have to get when you possess the ball. Um, yeah, I think, that's about, I think that about covers it. Both teams going over the final adjustments, even the officials huddled up at midfield, making sure they're all set and ready to go. And just to kind of recap how we got here, an electric second half for Red Mountain. Three rushing touchdowns from Zay Savoy to get things out in front and then Brophy come back and the game was decided in the red zone. Haney had the interception in his hands and just lost it and on the next play, Devin Fitzgerald with just his second touchdown reception of the season gets things tied up at 28. Two minutes and 40 seconds left in the break here. We're gonna step away and we will be back with overtime on RMTV. It all comes down to overtime in this 6A semifinal matchup between Brophy and Red Mountain. Both coaches meet at midfield along with their captains. It's Kyle Heath for Red Mountain and it's Charlie McGinnis for Brophy alongside his coach Jason Jewell and for Red Mountain it's Kyle Enders as we await the coin toss. And again, this is nothing new for the uh, Mountain Lions. They've been, uh, they've been here before. You know, I think we, if you if you watch the game from last week, you see a heavy dose of Savoy. Um, you know, again, what it comes down to is the defense that can make a stop and force a field goal really puts their, their offense at a major advantage. It was Red Mountain to get that done last week. They forced the field goal of Pinnacle, and Savoy ended it. We're waiting to see the toss here. Looks like Brophy's won the toss. Brophy up. won, and it looks like McGinnis made the sign to defer. Please remove your cars immediately. It will be good. What a spot for all these kids to be in, right? You, you dream of it. You work all season long for it, and the excitement from both sidelines come to fruition. The oh, Red I, Mountain defense race out onto the I, field. Yeah, so, they, so Brophy must have lost the toss. It or chose to get the ball, which I don't think they would do. It's hard to tell and get the signal. But like you said, advantageous to play defense first. And I, I think that's what happened because the, the team that did not win the toss would end up picking the side that they're going to defend. Or they're going to attack, I should say. So the teams make their final huddle to go over all those adjustments. And now trotting down the near sideline, Larry Fitzgerald. You can't miss him. Has to be happy for his son oh, yeah, catching the is. touchdown pass that put this game to overtime. He looks like he's ready to go back and play. Looks like he's in good shape. You could probably lock him up. <laughs> in a phone booth, maybe. <laughs> a lot of big names and faces here tonight in this Arizona high school football matchup. Fitzgerald just won to name a few. A few on the sidelines as well. Yeah. 
Brophy have the offense out there. It's the usual suspects. Charlie McGinnis alongside Estrada. Check with me. Again, the, there is no clock. There is still a play clock, but there is no time. They go with a give to Estrada. The first play, he breaks forward and gets inside the five. That's a good start for the Broncos. And the student section has up and moved down to that end. They have three to go, second down. McGinnis goes back to the same exact look, the check with me game. McGinnis sends Buggy in motion. McGinnis sprints out to the right, surges forward and he's in for his second touchdown tonight. All it takes is two and Brophy are in. And again, we saw it last week and a, a penalty negated it, but Red Mountain, when they scored a touchdown, elected to go for two to win the game. Will that be the case here if they're, if they're able to score a touchdown here? Will they go for two to end it? I would imagine being the, the lower seed on the road. Fury puts the extra point through again. And now Red Mountain have their chance. And all the, all the Brophy VIPs that ran down that sideline, it's quite a crowd around there. And it could be a distraction for sure. Because there's about... I'd say 120 people surrounding that, that end zone here. The Red Mountain offense get out onto the field and at the 10. It was all Wildcat last week in this scenario for Zay Savoy. We'll see if they have it again. And it will, no, it's not Wildcat. It's Lopez under center to start. Wagner, bottom of the formation, right side all alone. Lopez give to Savoy up the middle and he chunks forward for a few. It looks like a pickup of about three that time from Savoy. And another lineman coming in, so they're getting heavy here. Yes, Swagger, Swagger checks out, out, and then it's Via Lobos to come in. Just getting an extra blocker. They're adding another gap for them to cover. We have Griffin in at the tight end spot. These are their these are their heavy hitters. This is this is their run block formation here. Wildcat this time. Savoy up to the left, cuts back to the right in the arms and is brought down. Tackle made by Jack Seabald that time. He gets down to the four. Well, three yards in the cloud of dust will get you where you want to go in four downs. Lopez back to the wristband. Two plays to score here for the Mountain Lions. And again, this is something they've practiced and scripted all week. They've run these plays multiple times, I'm sure. So there's no surprises. Enders books it down the far sideline and gets a timeout off. I mean, he looked like him from his playing days right yeah, there, scooting was, and booting. He really opened up the stride there. You might have to recruit him. It looked like he was going two strides per five yards, yeah, so that's a was, good sign. And with good body lean as well. You know, you, you, you see the pregame warm-ups, all the players loosening up and stretching, but you don't want your coach to pull a hammy looking for a no. timeout on the sideline. No, man, that was, uh, they must have saw something that they didn't like. And I like, the, I like the call here. Again, you know, you got two plays to punch it in here. You know what I wonder? If you go back to the bread and butter of Simon Lopez with the hard count. It's worked already a few times tonight. Yeah, and it'll get you get half the distance. Extra yards. You it'll go from you the three the to the one and a yeah, half. Absolutely. Strength against strength between these two lines. Lopez will be in under center. Wagner to the far left side All of the formation. Long. I mean, there's, there's one Brophy player out there and no one within 20 yards of those two. Schmier in front of Savoy. Savoy gets it left side forward and into the end zone. 
So now the question. What will Red Mountain do? And I think they're going to go. Brophy called. They answer. Do Red Mountain want to try and get out of this one right here, right now? And they're going to go for it. It's the all or nothing look, or is it Kai Evans? They're going. The ball game will be decided on this play. Everything here right now. All the guts for all the glory. And they've changed personnel groupings, I think, four times. They bring Villalobos back in. Bigler out. Wagner out. Three yards. It this all comes down to this. Decides the season for both of these teams. Savoy from the Wildcat is the look. And Brophy's going to get a timeout here and talk about it. The timeout taken. The hearts have the to be pounding match. of all the players, all the fans, the coaches. And like you mentioned, you move a piece, I move a piece. Is, is, this, is this the, is this the, the situation where we see the pop pass, the jump pass? The Derrick Henry play that we see with the Tennessee Titans where he goes over the top. If it's someone to catch it, if it's that exact design, it would be Preston Heap, where you get the or tight Skidmore. end to slip out. Yeah, or Skidmore, either one of them. Both pretty sure-handed. I don't know. I, again, and now does Coach McDaniel go to play call number two? What are they going to dial up here? It's all going to – I love this. This is why football is so great. It all comes down to one play. One team will be ecstatic. The other team will be devastated after this snap. It is high school football at its finest. The chess match continues in the 6A semifinal matchup between the Brophy Broncos and Red Mountain Mountain Lions. Savoy out of the Wildcat for the two-point conversion. Savoy gets it. Up the right side. Savoy into the end zone. Bishop to Rook 9. Oh Red Mountain win it. Unbelievable. And they just went strength on strength and got behind those big boys up front. And Brophy is in shock right now. The 12 seed have come on the road and upset the one seed in Brophy prep. This team has hit their stride in November and have not given up. Zay Savoy has done it all tonight for Red Mountain. Oh my goodness. And you know, you couldn't have scripted a better ending for him to punch it through here. And I'm just, I'm just blown away. The, the guts to go for that call and the confidence that they have in those offensive linemen and Savoy shines through. And they'll be going to ASU next Saturday. And we'll be going to ASU, We'll be partner. going as well. You know, the funniest thing about this is I was almost in Flagstaff today. And I said, I got to stick with it with this team and come call this game. And it's an instant classic. Oh, my goodness. Back to the finish of this one. The second half comeback from Red Mountain. Zay Savoy has only played since that game where he was in against Highland. That was the sixth week of the season. Yeah. After tonight, he has a stat line for a whole season. Four touchdowns on the ground tonight, two a week ago against Pinnacle. He has been the player for this team. Absolutely. And they've gotten in a groove with their offensive line, and they are running, they are blocking for him, and he continues to run hard and finish runs. And we saw it on that last, he didn't, it wasn't easy. He had to run two uh, defenders over to get into the end zone, and he did it to punch it in and end it. The tough running continues, and Kyle Enders just has an act for the excitement against Brophy. This is the fourth straight win of Red Mountain over Brophy. Kyle Enders ended their playoff bid last year, did the same thing this year. I told you about the history we went over when they won the state championship back in that 2000-2001 season. They beat Mountain View, and then they took down Brophy. Same thing here parody in high school football. And now the Mountain Lions are back in the state championship for the first time since 2019. What an exciting finish and the guts from Kyle Enders to say I don't want to keep going back and forth in overtime. We're either ending it here or ending our season here. A final of 36 to 35 and the player of the game has to be Zay Savoy. Oh, he was electric all night long in the backfield four touchdowns and the two-point conversion to end it. Without a doubt, 
he took the took the team on his shoulders, and they uh, and they got it done. I'm just I'm just so uh, impressed with how they've turned this thing around, and they've almost morphed into a different football team these last few weeks. And you know, Saguaro's going to be challenged because you're going to look at the record, you're going to look at the seed, and those coaches are going to have to sell them on this is a very good football team we're going to be facing, and they continue to play with house money. And who knows, one more game, one more game for glory. A fantastic finish tonight as Red Mountain plays spoilers. As they're seeded number 12, they take down the one seed Brophy, 36 to 35. Thank you so much everybody for tuning in to RMTV. Have an incredible rest of your holiday weekend. Alongside Chris Andriotis, I have been Zach Warhack. A win for Red Mountain. They're headed to the state championship game. We will see you there.